esteemed guests, speakers, attendees, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the fifth International Scientific E-Conference on the topic of science and education in the formation of an integral worldview as an evolutionary necessity. Let me please tell you that we have simultaneous translations available directly on Zoom in Russian, English and French. You can choose your language directly in Zoom by clicking on the globe on the bottom Zoom bar. My name is Joachim Christoph Wienelt. I am a Gestalt therapist, psychotherapist and counselor working online with clients all over the world and my expertise is working with groups and collective intelligence. So I'm honored to be your moderator for the first part of this important event. I hope everyone can fully participate in this conference in a spirit of mutual respect and intellectual curiosity and take away valuable insights and new perspectives on the role of science and education in shaping an integral worldview in our changing world. Thank you all for being here. We hope you will enjoy the conference and thank you for your participation. So again, you have, if you didn't hear that, there is uh, English, French and Russian available. Below there is this globe, you can click on it and please, and you can choose your language, please open your cameras if possible. Only those whose cameras are turned on and who raise their hand will be accepted in the Zoom room generally. And also later when you have questions, you need to have open your camera. And it's just good to have a better connection with each other. So there are also the possibility to that you post your questions on our Zoom chat or in the YouTube chat for those who are watching us via the YouTube live stream. We will have a 10 minute break from 1540 to 1550 Central European time and the conference will end at the 1745 Central European time. For the program, please check our website. The link is posted in our live chats right now. So again, please feel free to post your questions in the live chat during the presentation and we will do our utmost to answer them after each presentation. So there will be no chance to ask within during the presentation, but afterwards. And now it is my honor to introduce our director, Professor Evrem Eliav, who will be delivering the opening speech for this conference. Professor Eliav is Kamiya Research Professor in the field of atomic physics and relativistic quantum chemistry at Tel Aviv University. He specializes in precision calculations of the physical properties of heavy atomic molecular systems, necessary both for testing fundamental physical theories and applied research and development. He has published over 140 articles in leading scientific journals like Nature, he is a laureate of more than 25 international grants and prizes. He has worked as a visiting professor at 15 leading universities in the USA, Canada, Europe, Japan and China. He's been a speaker at over 50 international conferences and seminars. So please join me in welcoming Professor Ephraim Eliav, please. Thank you very much, dear Joachim. Let me share my screen. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, really my great pleasure and honor to welcome you to the fifth uh, uh, International Scientific Conference of the Institute for Humanity Un Unified Development, IHUD. Our previous four conferences were hosted under the uh, all spice and the integral of the integral world research institute ivrim and you can access to the materials from all these uh conferences that were 
previously previously uh, provided on our site you see our site on the screen and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, today we are stand before a, a multitude uh, ch ch challenges both both uh, in intellectual and uh, practical we are fortunate to have 10 presenters from around the world including lectures from uh, Turkey, Israel, United States, Russia, Ukraine, and uh, uh, Lithuania. Our diverse speakers include scholars, university lectures, school teachers, medical doctors, engineers, journalists, and uh, artists. And all eager to share the, their knowledge and experience with you. We are hosting two roundtable sessions as well on very topical issues. And I warmly invite you to actively participate uh, in both our Q&A session, sessions and the roundtable discussions. And uh, 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 let me just uh, uh, formulate the main goals of the conference. So the uh, major goals of the conference are the following. First of all, we would like to bring general public and uh, uh, specialists in integrative science and education together to share knowledge and experience and facilitate integrative, uh, integrative social development in order to harmonize social ties and relationships and create integral approaches for management of social, economic, and uh, pol political issues. And the second point is just to develop East strategies and practice for the universal integral education. Uh, we want this education to be suitable for all ages, and uh, we want to be also uh, adequate for the 21st century challenges. So um, uh, our institute is uh, waiting for sharing ideas and know-how with you. We are open to uh, collaboration with all the people and the organization who share our world vision and goals. If you are interested in participating in our international scientific and educational project, please contact us using the em email which is presented here. Uh, the conference is now open and I'd like to transfer uh, my warm wishes for all uh, partic participants and all uh, watchers on YouTube channel uh, that our conference will be uh, sec successful and uh, fruitful. Thank you very much. And I tra transfer Mike to our wonderful moderator, please. Thank you so much, Professor Ephraim, for that inspiring opening speech. It's really pacing us, giving us the the path to where we want to go here together and we remind you that the conference is available in english french and russian you can choose your language directly in zoom by clicking on the lower bar you will find a globe there and there you can click on it and find your language you need for questions please note that they can be asked after the end of each presentation only those whose cameras are turned on and who raise their hand will be accepted in the Zoom room. Otherwise, you can post your questions on our Zoom chat or YouTube chat for those who are watching us via the YouTube live stream. For the full conference schedule, please check our website. The link is being posted in our live chats now. I am pleased to introduce our first presentation of the day with the title Neuropedagogy 
as a relevant branch of scientific knowledge which has been prepared by Ms. Natalia Ushakova. Let me introduce her, please. Ms. Natalia Ushakova is based in St. Petersburg, Russia, and she is an accredited pediatrician, allergist, immunologist, and neuropsychologist. With a deep commitment to holistic care, she integrates innovative approaches like neuro-linguistic programming and profiling into her practice. Her career spans pioneering work in pediatric medicine, neuropsychology and supplementary education, focusing on the comprehensive well-being of children. So, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ms. Natalia Oshakova's presentation, Neuropedagogy as a Relevant Branch of Scientific Knowledge. Hello, great colleagues. Thank you for uh, your interest in this conference and uh, for this theme for neuropedagogy uh, as an actual branch of scientific knowledge. And a huge gratitude to uh, organi organizer translators. So, neuropedagogy. Uh, pedagogy is the actual branch of scientific knowledge. Why it sounds like that? Why the title is it? Uh, the reason is that neuropedagogy is, is a transdiscipline of the scientific knowledges. Just pay attention, please. This, in the presentation, there are two uh, young people, there's something uh, writing, they're hearing each other, or they're uh, they, they write differently. Look how they differently, how they have and, and uh, their head. The neuropedagogue uh, pays attention actually to all those things. So they have to pay attention. Parents and educators have to pick, uh, attend, pay attention because uh, there is actually pedagogy, it's, it's, pedagogy is actually is the, the science about the whole combination of different aspects of human being, and also it belongs to neuropedagogy. Neuropedagogy uh, helps everyone, um, each of us, just to uh, uh, absorb uh, holistic, and uh, feel each other much better to in uh, the next slide, please. Uh, let's consider an implementation of neuropedagogy in, in, as an example of teaching uh, children so let's say uh, what uh, what age the uh, child has to start to be uh, taught because six uh, six seven years old you might be surprised because right now actually um, it's common to teach children much earlier but actually uh, according to the uh, all uh, six seven years year it's actually the development of the uh, those uh, lobes of brain are formated and, and the, that is this exactly the stage when the child can absorb everything so everything he that is the special the critical zones of the brain is actually uh, developed, and that's why he's in this age can actually uh, construct grammar, uh, uh, reading, writing. Uh, also, uh, actually, at seven years old, all it doesn't matter what culture on uh, I, this is exactly at seven. There is a, a, a there is a a zone that formated uh, that, uh, to the of the writing that is asymmetric to its speech. It's actually another very uh, very important moment, very actual uh, right now. A very 
to enter the the uh, a child to assault them. Uh, the, uh, so the child actually developed the critical uh, 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 assessment of his behavior, especially in this age. He is actually ready uh, to be uh, uh, to uh, actually accomplish some tasks for uh, so, so be on duty and all other many other things. Also, very important is just exactly at six seven years old, the uh, child can actually can, he can he can actually uh, make goals. Uh, for uh, for a duration of a week in neuropedagogy is that they actually call it as a planning uh, as a temporary perspective just uh, depending on a time so you can uh, realize the future visualize the future in this age uh, you start uh, accomplishing that in overall, actually, the formation of the uh, time perspective, it, it actually develops with time, and by the 14 years old, actually, the, the child can actually plan his life uh, for three months. So that is, we can, we can uh, actually assess what time to start really planning the long term. The next slide. So we can, we already talked about that, so we can now we can go to what is the practical tools that the near pedagogy uh, opens the for teaching can help with. We can say uh, in, in, a, in a metaphorical uh, sense, we can say that there are only four um, the points of neuropedagogy. The first one, strategies of thinking according to the uh, for the right approach that others will feel and hear you. Second, what is the uh, modality and what is the representative system? So, what is the temperature? And the first, the fourth is just the whole instruments uh, you can actually master. The next slide. Uh, so for, uh, for the right realization for those three points that we talked about, uh, uh, there is actually so for synthesized uh, teaching. Methods. So, the different uh, methods of the neuropedagogical methods. So, together with the uh, already traditional, uh, traditionally developed uh, methods. So, de depending on the uh, how the, the social uh, and national intellect. So. The first is training goal. So in the, during, so the the step by step organization. Why is that? Because every person has their own strategy of, of thinking relating to the world, sensations, and so on. What does it mean? So lateralization of the leading uh, part of the brain. So the majority of us are the right handed. That means that uh, that the the uh, the left uh, uh, hemisphere of the brain works. So the, the left hand so the, this doesn't mean that uh, it's uh, it's actually the the, the right hemisphere. No. The, these are actually opposite uh, our uh, methods of uh, worldview. And then there is a com combination. There is a both hemisphere work together. So they're actually so the both both hemispheres are connected. 
uh, to get the next slide to understand that uh, we will just uh, very quickly we'll talk about it. so the left hemisphere pay attention to its inductive processes in that from from the, the right hemisphere deductive process it's just different uh, perception of abstract features the left hemisphere the abstract features the right is perception of specific side the left hemisphere sequential processing the right one is parallel the analytical perception, the left hemisphere, and synthetic holistic perception, the right hemisphere. Perception of time, the, this is the left uh, hemisphere, and the reception of in space, this the right hemisphere. That is very beautiful, those are hemispheres are uh, work together but one prevails but that's what we have to absolutely uh, know this is the next slide so how to to teach uh, the with individual strategies so the left hemisphere so uh, we are the, the silence and the, the, the black uh, uh, board and the logical and the just very detailed and the many times repetition verbal repetition next the motivational stage is the, the first uh, i want to learn i want to get uh, knowledge it doesn't matter what teacher evaluates me how to uh, uh, calculate the result so there is actually the uh, the testing and, and uh, questions of the closed uh, uh, way. So the most, uh, the most uh, right now, what's happening in in the right uh, hemisphere? So right, this is the figurative nature of a concrete process. Those people, uh, those kids are there. The, there has to be the very it's good actually uh, the whole knowledge is that they know that their music that there is something very bright there uh, there are different types of the, the very uh, there is the other slide is motivation stage. It's just the approval for those kids. Uh, we, we, we don't know who are the left hemispheres or, or right hemispheres. Uh, the, the result, the result, we, we talked about that. So we have to uh, uh, actually see what is, do we need do we need to see that there is a, the graphic the graphic uh, representation of of the, uh, of the results and and the actually uh, and the equal hemispheres uh, has to be uh, both at least the next slide please uh, so if so if we have kids with a different uh, organization how do we integrate them? So we, we need that, that, we, that, that both hemispheres work, so that, that they have to be the good connection between both hemispheres, left and right. So, so for the left hemisphere, is for the right. We have to we have to uh, somehow develop it as well. We need text and the. Uh, uh, technical uh, character so there is uh, the metaphors that uh, who are left and right and the prof uh, the, yeah there is uh, the prof, prof uh, who's uh, right hand uh, they, they see they see uh, a lot, uh, the forest and they don't see one tree so uh, uh, to accept accept information what modality is the prevalent 
the very uh, important instrument that we have to uh, understand. So modalities. So each of us uh, is actually uh, 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 observes the world, they hear, they, they, we see a taste and, and smell. And it, so one of those modalities, uh, so so there is a, a different uh, a part of uh, brain hemispheres are leading. So there is the verbal uh, perception, audio, kinesthetic. Uh, so there is a, a fourth one, uh, digital. So this digital, uh, this develops in the teenage uh, and also the, the uh, adults, uh, there are some deformation. Uh, so there is the, if there is some, some kind of stir and there is realities, there is closed, the emotional uh, perception closed. How can we actually uh, distinguish? So with the neuropedagogical uh, methods uh, developed, it's, it's very, uh, they're very easy. You have to listen how children children uh, uh, talk. The uh, the visual uh, uh, usually uh, they they use words uh, bright. Uh, uh, it's audio uh, perception. They they hear uh, something see and kinesthetic something moving and. And so on. The digital representation is actually uh, yeah, seeing about, observe the next slide, please. Uh, we already talked about that. Uh, next one. So, uh, also, very, very uh, important it's about the representative systems. We need to pay attention to how they observe the child uh, how during the education process, how the uh, educator has to be attention. It's very with a visual child with a visual modality that just uh, draw something right when, when the educator is talking. So they, they, uh, it's better observe what does kinesthetic he, he needs to move to move the head so we have uh, yeah let's remember the first slide one is moving his head so teacher doesn't have to stop don't don't move your what are you doing you're moving your hand uh, or or the your pen what does the verbal oriented child does he he has to move his his mouth he has to uh, slowly uh, talk about it and what digital that he needs to think uh, and the teacher the teacher is telling him why are you what are you thinking about another very uh, important is the temperament uh, of a child uh, the educator uh, has to feel what, what uh, temperament uh, the child is, melancholy, sanguinic, so it actually inherits uh, their uh, qualities. So, and if the child is melancholy and, and the teacher start actually start abruptly asking him, he can uh, bring this child to a stupor, and melancholy is their, their slower uh, uh, reactions. So they're very, very sensitive. And uh, to, that's why uh, it's very uh, abruptly or, you know, just even with the tone of the voice, uh, you can, you can uh, turn the, uh, this child uh, for several hours, maybe even a day. Uh, they sometimes educators call them, oh, they, they bother everyone the next. Uh, so, uh, for uh, us, uh, uh, for educators to uh, uh, approach it properly, 
we need to uh, actually uh, com combine the different uh, strategies of, of thinking, modalities, temperament, uh, everything. This is actually an art, and actually, and and also uh, uh, see the initiative initiative of a person. This is the creativity of educator and the love for children to, to uh, people. How can we do that? For example, uh, the, he calls the child and, and he asks a child an answer, the answer uh, he, he and, uh, and the teacher responds accordingly to the modality of, of the child. And then uh, he, what, uh, he asks children, what can you actually uh, uh, say about it, or let's see, let's see what you can add. We also uh, uh, help children of different uh, modalities to uh, just all harmonious picture. Uh, and, and also, it's not also uh, like you know. I, I give you some some you know uh, approval, but there there is. Uh, yeah, and also very important uh, important to see the gender differentiation. This the theme is a very broad, so we don't have time for that. But there are different aspects uh, we can say. Uh, so we can say the men and boys. The, 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 the neuron connection is uh, actually uh, vertical. So that's why. They are very quickly uh, uh, realize the concrete task. That's why they're uh, to, so because they have uh, uh, sharpened their attention to something. And what uh, uh, girls and women they have there there is uh, vertical and there is horizontal. So the connection between those. Those uh, the nuances are for girls. That that is what they are very good at. So that's why we uh, actually depend on each other and we uh, complement each other. And uh, educators need to all this uh, pay pay attention to that. Uh, so the, the different maybe it's uh, the approach of education should be that uh, if the, if the separated education because girls develop uh, in two years uh, approximately faster the, the other very interesting men men and, and uh, children when when they work better when there is a cool atmosphere and women is so the next uh, Next slide. So, uh, what we just talked about, uh, we can say the conclusion, we can draw the conclusion. In neuropedagogy it is very, very important and necessary how to, how, how to educate children, the correct. Uh, education, how to relate to each other, but how to realize it. Uh, there is some uh, there is necessary knowledge, but so there, uh, the, uh, there has to be an uh, education uh, for, 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 to, for those knowledges of how our brain works. So, also the uh, so maybe added to classification uh, to the uh, medical professions, this uh, spe specialty, neuro uh, So organize uh, the actually uh, support for parents and, and, and educators. So, so, so how the uh, brain of child develops, what, what kind, uh, what age is appropriate for different kinds of, of uh, things, and also for all educators, for everyone, uh, parents, uh, to know all those elements that each, uh, the, the, each person is a, a unique 
uh, and uh, has the, a very unique structure and there is internal structure that actually uh, opens up depending on the surrounding in the environment method of education that, that brings in uh, each individual is, is beautiful and has so much potential so to have this what it is what it, to develop uh, great Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dear Ms. Ushakova, for this insightful presentation and inviting us to such a deep reflection here. And as we have gone over time, we invite the participants to forward all questions in the chat so we can forward to Ms. Ushakova. So we will take time for that um, um, to, to pass the questions on. And thank you again for this beautiful insight about brain development of children. And now we are going to move to our next speaker. It's about integrative comprehension of reality, status and perspectives by Professor Ephraim Eliav. It's my pleasure again to introduce our second speaker of the day. Professor Ephraim Eliav is Kamiya Research Professor in the field of atomic physics and relativistic quantum chemistry at Tel Aviv University. He specializes in precision calculations of the physical properties of heavy atomic molecular systems necessary both for testing fundamental physical theories and applied research and development. He has published over 140 articles in leading scientific journals like Nature, He's a laureate of more than 25 international grants and prizes. He has worked as a visiting professor at 15 leading universities in the US, Canada, Europe, Japan, and China. He's been a speaker at over 50 international conferences and seminars. So the title of his presentation is Integrative Comprehension of Reality, Status, and Perspectives. Please, thank you. Thank you very much, Joachim, for this uh, double introduction. Uh, well, I am representing uh, here the Institute for Humanity and Universal Development, IHUT, as I have already talked. In my presentation, I'd like to sketch outline of the uh, scientific background, goal, structure, and feature of the integrative comprehension of reality which nowadays is under development in our institute, both theoretically and in practice, in order just to provide an uh, adequate response to the challenges of the 21st uh, century and build a peaceful and flourishing human civilization in the entire world. It is important to know that uh, most, uh, illustration, most il illustrations in my talk were generated by DALI component of chat uh, GPT. Uh, so, uh, comprehension of uh, reality. Uh, the strongest human desire to investigate and comprehend reality has been a driving force th throughout the history with science, technology, all art, culture, philosophy, and uh, religion all aiming to fulfill this uh, innate necessity. Yes, and it was um, mentioned in many works, uh, like in works of uh, Tarnas. However, the uh, reliability of uh, existing uh, scientific methodology and alternative approaches in providing a true picture of reality remains a subject of debate. And we can uh, read about uh, debate, for instance, in good uh, papers. Furthermore, the uh, stability of the individual human consciousness for objective investigating is also questioned. Uh, there are many works of uh, famous Australian philosophy, philosopher uh, Ch Chalmers who is just uh, writing about this. Uh, so this uh, uh, presentation will explore briefly 
briefly the essence of the nature of our reality, its building blocks, interconnections, and the possibility of uh, adequate and objective comprehension of reality through the integrative form of human consciousness. Uh, reality is uh, uh, characterized by its in informational and the entangled nature stemming from the quantum integrative, integrative non-local feature of the Big Bang initial state. And we can read about uh, how our universe has uh, developed during this Big Bang uh, in, the, in the work of Bell, Aspect, and etc., and why our world is uh, entirely interconnected. The uh, concept of um, so-called uh, casuality and the governance of the of reality by integral, symmetric, and minimax laws suggest a deep interconnected universe, and we can see uh, different kind of um, explanation for this uh, uh, phenomena in the works of Wheeler, Aronoff, and many others investigators. The uh, self-consistent, self-resembling, uh, synergetic, emergent, and informational aspects of reality point towards an integrative nature that uh, encompass matter, time, space, in, and consciousness. And about that, we can read in many works of Bohm, Sheldrake, Mandelbrot, uh, Prigozhin, and other uh, very well-known sciences sci 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 scientists of our time. More uh, detail details about fundamental uh, informational building block of nature will be presented today in the talk of Dr. Alex Averbach from our institute. And uh, I really welcome you to hear his talk. Uh, last but not least important feature of our reality is its um, human-oriented or anthropic uh, character. On the next slide, I'll give more details on the uh, uh, precise human-friendly uh, character of our nature. So, uh, numerical uh, anthropic principles, both in, on micro and macro scales, constantly being discovered in many scientific branches, like in physics, chemistry, uh, biology, and uh, anthropology, and uh, others, they uh, su 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 suggest that uh, our reality is not only human-oriented, but it is really human-friendly. Uh, and uh, about this, you can read many papers of uh, Barrow and uh, Tipler. The concept of a big informational bank, uh, which just um, uh, demonstrate uh, unproportionally huge concentration of um, information density on our of, of all our universe on the on our planet on the planet Earth and its uh, particular uh, relevance to human life, especially in intellectual, emotional, and social aspects, uh, further supports uh, this idea, and it was uh, mentioned by many works of uh, Bekenstein. Uh, the concept of a big informational uh, bank, which uh, really uh, demonstrates that most of the information in our humanity, uh, of, of our universe is concentrated on the planet Earth, and in particular uh, on human um, life, especially in, in uh, it, intellectual, emotional, and social aspects. Uh, this was investigated in the works of uh, Bekenstein. Uh, human consciousness appears to be particularly suitable and could be further fine-tuned 
and extend them to more adequate and objective uh, comprehension of reality in accordance with minimax and uh, resonance principles. And we can read about these uh, features in works of uh, Penrose and uh, uh, Hammerov. Now, uh, uh, if we are talking about the uh, regular comprehension of uh, uh, reality, including uh, the most advanced uh, scientific research in our world, then all this research relies substantially on uh, the sub sub uh, subjective five senses and the mind of an investigator, even when collective efforts are involved. And about this you can read in the work of a famous philosopher, uh, Popper. This approach is not integrative and cannot be truly objective as it doesn't correspond to the integrity structure of uh, nature. And about that feature, you, uh, there were many papers of famous physicist Bohm. Some tips on how to get out of the limitation of individual consciousness we are getting from greatest minds of the previous uh, sen sen century Albert Einstein and Kurt uh, Gödel. You can see these outstanding uh, scientists on my slide. In particular, uh, Albert Einstein said, it is impossible to solve a problem on the same level as it originated. You need to be higher. You need to rise to the next level. Einstein didn't explain what does it mean the next level and how to rise on it. And Einstein-based pupil and friend Kurt Gödel also provided uh, that uh, regular mass and actually all science is not complete. Thus, we rely, uh, we, we, we really need to be outside or above of our individual consciousness uh, in order just to uh, just just a moment, it just... Uh, yes. Uh, just uh, to be objective, just to uh, in investigate our nature uh, in a true mode, and uh, also to be uh, in a more complete form, in order just to suit what the uh, uh, Godel is telling us. Uh, so uh, in this flight, I would like to just point some uh, special features of integrative uh, cooperation and the potential for a measured collective consciousness, which is investigated, investigated in our uh, institute. So our institute, Ehud, uh, is uh, uh, mostly devote its efforts to show that uh, uh, special integrative connection and cooperation between people is uh, the scientifically proven and practical way for building the imagined collective consciousness suitable for the truly objective perception of reality and actually uh, also for the new level of uh, life of all uh, humanity as a united single super organism. Uh, cooperation is a key factor in human uh, success with the biological world. You can uh, 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 see many uh, explanations about this in the work of Axelrod and Novak. The possibility of uh, creating imagined collective forms of consciousness through al altruistic uh, networks, analogous to the connection of the cells in a uh, multicellular organism, is uh, an intriguing concept which was described in works of Wilson, uh, Holdebler, and some other uh, scientists of our time. Various disciplines such as biology, 
psychology and anthropology provide insight into the study of uh, super organisms in nature. And you can check this point in the works of uh, Wheeler, uh, Kamazins, and uh, some uh, others. Uh, <clears throat> areas of uh, uh, social life where cooperation is the most uh, pr pronounced, actually are probably uh, life of uh, f family, civil services, military services, different uh, religious uh, uh, communities. All these areas demonstrate that uh, integrative, integrative cooperation involves uh, uh, prioritizing group in interests over personal ones and developing relationships based on mutual responsibility and uh, altruism. And you can see about these many discussions in the work of uh, Sober and Wilson. Uh, cooperative um, and focused sci scientific um, work on building a super organism for, from the group uh, members in practice is crucial. And this is, you can uh, read in works of um, uh, Toshin and uh, Corning. Uh, here in this slide, in a graphical form, uh, I am comparing the integrative scientific uh, paradigm based on integrative consciousness, which is uh, uh, conceptually is being developed in the hood versus regular science. So uh, regular science constitute from a uh, uh, theoretical approach. It is one ACES. And the second ACES will limit uh, the science. The science, uh, the scientific plane is the experimental uh, approach. Uh, uh, all, all those experimental and uh, theoretical approaches nowadays are well developed and they include many uh, features uh, which are mentioned in this graph. In this graph, for instance, uh, to do the proper experiment, we need to start from observation and then trial and then cross-checking and then complete verification with the theory. Theory consists of speculations, hypotheses, uh, logical uh, deduction, data analysis, and then compare with experiment. So uh, experiment and, and, and theory are both uh, self-consistent, uh, uh, but they are uh, connected to the individual consciousness. This, the thought is on axis on on my graph is just consciousness, and you can see here different level of consciences. Uh, it will start from the very basic individual consciousness, which all people uh, have, but um, are other forms of consciousness. And we are investigating the forms uh, in our institute are uh, co co conjugated when two people are connected, then we have group consciousness, intergroup consciousness, uh, humanity is a super organism, and we have also some kind of a global uh, consciousness. And the regular science uh, is, uh, which uh, describes the uh, reality corresponding to the individual consciousness. It is still uh, just the plain uh, picture of our reality and this is why the it can investigate only the uh some some subjective truths which is just inside this plane but um, uh, the real truth or objective reality could be and usually is above the plane the plane of individual reality and could be uh reached only with the collective synergetic level of consciousness uh, so, uh, each level of uh, consciousness, collective consciousness, defi define also a particular level of uh, uh, reality or horizontal plane. And we are currently working on the theory and structure 
and functionality of these levels of uh, consciousness uh, and uh, the practical methodology, how to apprise on the consciousness axis towards towards more collective integral uh, levels. This uh, methodology, uh, methodology uh, constitutes the core of integral uh, education which we are developing in our uh, institute. Uh, the uh, necessity of uh, integrative uh, comprehensive of uh, reality which is being developed uh, uh, initially uh, with uh, special experimental groups like uh, ours in the hood may be the key of uh, solution of human uh, su su survival in deteriorate deteriorating world solving uh, ex existential uh, pro problems such as global crisis uh, crises including new world war and anti humanian uh, general ai development and some other threats and uh, uh, actually we are uh, aiming to build a harmonious uh, uh, humanity which will be lived like human super organism and you can uh, see different kind of uh, uh, talk about uh, this uh, opportunity in the works of Laszlo and uh, Ro Ro Rosen. Uh, practical ways to build such human uh, super organism uh, include massive integrative education, worldwide social integral uh, movement, roundtable discussion forums, integrative scientific studies, and the development of special integrate, integral economic and laws uh, si si systems. And some uh, uh, features of all this uh, new world uh, world. Uh, integrative uh, system you can uh, find in the work of uh, Wilbur, Beck and Cohen, and also uh, Michael Lightman. Uh, now, uh, uh, thus, uh, can, uh, can, uh, concluding my talk, I can say that uh, uh, integrative uh, comprehension of uh, uh, reality should be universal uh, sol sol solution of the 21st century challenges. The uh, so-called integral uh, connection uh, supporting the integrative uh, com uh, comprehension of uh, reality leading to the new synergetic life uh, at the level of global humanity could be uh, characterized by mutual agreement, mutual uh, compliance, mutual assistance, mutual authority, and mutual life. Uh, and such uh, life leads to the uh, complete harmony of human uh, society and nature. And for implement for the proper implementation of all these ideas, we need to uh, massively develop uh, the. Uh, 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 integral dissemination and integral education. So future is in our hand. And uh, uh, thank you for your attention. And yeah, and I invite you again to visit a site of our institute. And uh, please, I'm ready for questions if they are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear Professor Elia, for this inspiring presentation. Your insights have shed a light on some fascinating aspects of our field. So thank you again. So now let us see if we have some questions. So you are invited to ask your questions. And I'm sure our audience is eager to delve deeper into the topics we've covered. So if you have a question, you want to raise it here live. You can sh share uh, by raising your hand. I'm, I'm showing it to you. This is how you raise your hand. You go down where reaction is and you go to the smiley and then uh, there is raise hand. So if you want to do that, you are invited to do that. You can also send it in the Zoom chat 
or on the YouTube channel. So I'm curious, is there a question here in the room? This is, we would take this first, otherwise we would go to the written questions. If you don't find the raise hand button, you can also just do like this. We might see that. So I don't see a raised hand here at this point. So why don't we hear from Yasmin if we have a written question? Yes, we have uh, three questions and we'll see if we have time. So for the first one, it comes from YouTube from Ludmilla. She asks, how does the conscious and subconscious mind work and how much does one affect the other? Well, you're asking one of the most uh, uh, terrible and uh, uh, complicated question for all uh, sci scientists and uh, uh, philosophers. Uh, from my point of view, uh, conscious is just um, uh, a global part which uh, includes uh, many parts inside. And subconsciousness is just uh, the a part of the consciousness that uh, uh, it is built built in. It's just some kind of uh, software inside us that we don't uh, feel and don't understand how it is working. But it is um, uh, not only the product of, of uh, uh, ev evolution, I believe, but it is uh, also uh, a product of some kind of global uh, con uh, consciousness which is outside of uh, time and space and it is just some kind of um, uh, very special uh, th th theory that we are developing in our Ehud Institute it could be uh, sound like some kind of mystery but it is really a very uh, very uh, sci sci scientifically based approach it's all uh, that I can say now. Thank you. And um, yeah, that's very interesting to delve into this consciousness, subconsciousness topic. So, but are we having one more question? Maybe we have time for one more. Yes, we have time for one more. So the other question also from YouTube, from our English uh, channel, what is the importance of integrative cooperation? Yeah, I have already mentioned uh, uh, in my talk that um, it is really some kind of key approach how to reach this level of uh, collective uh, consciousness. There is no other way uh, but to, to be uh, alt altruistic and to develop this special kind of uh, integrative uh, connection via the many different kind of uh, techniques that we are developing, like a proper roundtable uh, communication, different kind of integral games and integral uh, educational uh, systems, etc. So it's just kind of really uh, scientific approach to make our uh, connection to be integral ones. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So I think this is it. Our time is up here. Thank you very much again, dear Professor Elia, for, for this insightful presentation and inviting us to such a deep reflection. And now we are going to move on to our next speaker of the day. It's presentation number three. So it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Professor Grigori Notkin. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Gregory Notkin is a distinguished electronics engineer, programmer and developer of medical devices. Professor Notkin's extensive experience as chief designer for diagnostic medical computerized systems for over 15 years has contributed significantly to the advancement of healthcare technology. Today, Professor Notkin will enlighten us with this presentation called The Importance of Differences Between People and nations for the unity of humanity. So this presentation will be in Russian. So again, reminding you, there is simultaneous translation in English and French. 
please know you can choose your language below on the lower bar. You can directly choose your language putting like pushing the globe button and then you can uh, choose your language. So we remind you that questions will be answered after the presentation. So please join me now in extending a warm welcome to Professor Grigori Notkin. Please go ahead. Hello, dear colleagues and friends. It's a pleasure to be holding this talk. I listened to two reports from our from our colleagues. It's very inspiring to continue this topic of integrality of the world. I'd like to pay draw your attention the importance of the difference between uh, nations for the unity from the mu multiples to unity i'd like to share this material with you so i'll open up the presentation and let's begin The first one the topic um, unity in variety is the most perfect form of unity this the most difficult for the human ego to perceive and uh, this is the intro Humanity is going through a deep systemic crisis that's uh, described in the growth of international and uh, international conflicts, the danger of uh, nuclear war, global ecological problems and other challenges. Maybe experts think that to overcome these dangers, we can only by uniting the efforts of the world, the international community. But on the way of this unity, there are deep civilizational, ethnic, religious and different and other differences between uh, nations and cultures. The nature of human ego gets in the way of this form of unity uh, in which uh, the interests of many different uh, such nations and countries are uh, taken into consideration. But there are uh, opportunities to overcome all these obstacles. The difference between people and nations should, shouldn't should uh, be looked at as obstacles on the way to group uh, universal human solidarity uh, furthermore the recognition and respect of the mul multiplicity and uh, it's gone now sorry the importance of differences between people nations for unity of humanity uh, here are, here are the contents of today's talk first the usefulness of biological and socio-cultural uh, difference uh, second unity through recognizing the usefulness of multiplicity uh, or diversity third ego as the obstacle uh, on the way to unity Four, the foundations of a constructive dialogue five overcoming conflicts and uh, animosity number one the usefulness of a biological and sociocultural diversity Biological diversity is a huge treasure uh, in uh, the, the genes and bacteria and bios, biospheres and so on. The diversity we see today is a result of uh, four and a half billion years of evolution. Uh, and the, a big influence uh, is done by man uh, as uh, as Amer uh, American biologist uh, Wilson says biological uh, diversity is a huge treasure that uh, we received from um, uh, many billion uh, years of history of life uh, we cannot waste this legacy it's uh, it's as if it's like burning a library uh, gathered by the evolution 
if we look at our planet we see uh, the beauty of it the the beauty of its uh, colors the colors uh, is uh, these colors this this diversity is created by the diversity of biology and uh, our planet is uh, unique and uh, we have to live here and and preserve life here i'd also like to say uh, another quote from levi strauss uh, the diversity of cultures of humanity is uh, as important for its future as the biological diversity of life as a whole so this depends on nature everything a whole livelihood depends on nature we get all our resources from uh, the soil and so on and everything we see is a huge organism made up of uh, millions of cells millions of bodies there are different uh, anatomically but when they uh, complement each other when there are some problems uh, in a body then uh, the there's a there are there are problems in disturbances in the connection between the elements then we have illness and so on and we need to exist in harmony with others around us so an important factor is the connection between the uh, links in a chain uh, but under the condition that they uh, complement each other and work together. The same we can say about the cultural uh, diversity of humanity. This quote from Levi Strauss, uh, the diversity of cultures um, of humankind is, is as important for its future as the biological diversity for life as a whole. The next slide. Uh, de destroying any national culture uh, harms humanity. Each nation adds uh, its part to the general humanity. Uh, there is uh, this expression, uh, humanity is not a herd of sheep but it's a part of the the whole body, the body of humanity. In unity is the strength, uh, is in uh, in diversity is the um, welfare, Ma Maria Theresa said. Um, this Reaching this ideal is only possible in through diversity the famous scientist martin buber uh, i become a character a personality by opening myself up to someone else and then i know his nature uh, this is what martin buber says the idea of solidarity of all people the history the source of one single human uh, family uh, takes uh, its takes its root in the uh, antiquity but can only be fully realized in our uh, global phase the cultural diversity is po is is as important for humanity as biodiversity for nature is one of the root conditions for a sustainable society that uh, can renew itself Vladimir Vernadsky said the following humanity as a whole becomes a strong geological force and before it before its thought and before its labor the question arises about rebuilding biosphere in the interests of uh, really thinking humanity as one whole and also uh, words from michael Leidman. today humanity has to realize itself as one organism all the all the people have to 
feel themselves as parts of one whole, caring for the well-being of this whole and the well-being of each individual. And we all know how, how important this is for our d development. Uh, Samuel Hamilton said, the collision and interactions between cultures and civilizations enriches the human experience. Uh, we can only survive by accepting all the cultures and traditions, forcing a single model of a specific um, societal structure can only harm the world only by only by respecting all the uh, characteristics of all the social groups can we build a correct society three the egoism egotism as um, an obstacle to unity our natural ego truly the the natural uh, ego inherent in a person prevents prevents from prevents from creating harmonious existence as Ar uh, Arthur Schopenhauer says each man puts uh, his his personality before uh, the individuality of others and that's why the egoism is inherent in the human nature and Erich Fromm says the modern industrial society with its cult of indi individualism and uh, competition increases the the primary inherent narcissism that exists in man to overcome this barrier Eric from called upon a change from uh, ego to altruism and solidarity of all people. A, a Russian philosopher Fyodorov uh, had a similar idea overcoming the ego and understanding the interest of humanity. And uh, this is achieved by respecting diversity. The next slide is how we can overcome this. All in all, for the foundations of constructive dialogue, how we can overcome our differences. Uh, the foundations of constructive dialogue, as Martin Buber said, we already mentioned him, respect in uh, another, his individuality, this uh, sacred essence that is realized in a uh, live conversation between you and I. Only on this way is it possible to reach uh, true closeness. Psychologist Karl Popper said the following, we have to try and understand the point of view of our opponent uh, as well as he understands it himself. And Marshall uh, Rosenberg said the following, in uh, the method of uh, non-violent uh, interaction as as Gandhi did it only on this foundation the search for uh, common solutions is possible the next uh, the next section overcoming conflicts and animosity in order to overcome conflicts, we have to uh, stop judging the other. This is very, this is very hard. Our ego functions in a way that it unconsciously is always looking for flaws in others. But in oneself, in his uh, family and his friends, he seeks justification. So this. Uh, this separation between someone who is close to someone and someone who is a foreigner, who is a stranger, is the key uh, key, key uh, split here. 
Nelson Mandela says, if you want to understand the first, if you want to make the first step to um, making peace with an enemy, you have to understand that uh, both parts will lose something. And Mahatma Gandhi says, the preparedness to, uh, to make mutual concessions uh, defines the ability to um, solve a conflict any conflict or argument uh, without violence. Eric Fromm says, through uh, mutual uh, concessions, we can come to agreement. And here there are some uh, powerful tools we want to talk about, a mechanism that allows different people to join their diversity and even opposite views is the discussion in uh, round circles. Here are the rules of round circles that lead to mutual concessions. Uh, here are the key rules I, I listed here. One, all the opinions are important, just like my own. Two, we discuss in sequence without uh, interrupting each other and we keep to the time limits we have. Otherwise, some people might speak for a long time. Three, we do not express disagreement or negative, um, our negative view about other points of view. We don't, uh, we don't argue and we just add our opinion, uh, our point of view and just explain why. Number four, we try in several circles going around by several, uh, going around several times around the circle, discussing a specific problem to find a solution that suits everyone or get as close to it as possible. It's usually impossible to come to a common agreement after just one circle, but after we go after several, uh, after we go through several circles, then it's gradually if we act according to these rules without uh, arguing, without um, bringing anyone down, then we find a solution. Five, the, it, the most important principle of finding a common solution is the art of seeking mutual concessions. And I would like to give some examples of uh, games and uh, exercises that help to uh, develop these mutual concessions. This is not uh, something we're used to. We usually fight for our opinion is the most correct one. And the opinion of someone else, if it differs a lot, then it's something from a different world. But these, uh, see, so seeking these opportunities to find something in common is very important. And here are some examples. And Uh, number one is uh, this game called Arbitration Court. A uh, group is broken into into twos and they ha all have a difficult situation. And the third one is becomes an, uh, a judge that helps the, the, the pairs to come to compromise. Uh, second one, um, scale of agreement. Uh, number three, role play uh, negotiation two teams uh, representing two sides have to come to agreement uh, in uh, uh, moderated discussions and that's why it's very important for us to have a pre uh, moderator that's prepared uh, for this then it's we can come to this agreement easier number four keeping friendship uh, participants uh, connect in uh, pairs of friends. They have a typical um, conflict of interest is typical for friendships that we have to solve through mutual understanding. And five, convince a skeptic. The participants work in pairs. Uh, someone is convinced and a skeptic. The skeptic has to uh, provide uh, counter arguments and they have to come to mutual agreement. Conclusion, I would like to, to emphasize that the differences between peoples and nations should not be seen as a danger to peace in the world. 
quite a contrary, this diversity opens up the only realistic way to general mutual understanding and agreement. Mutual enrichment of cultures and the idea of unity in diversity can become a foundation for building a truly humane world uh, society. One of the important element, elements of forming such a worldview that leads to unity is the uh, system of integral education that's been developed, uh, integral education and uh, upbringing. An a powerful mechanism that helps to reconcile difference, uh, different, even opposite views is, um, okay, it's gone now. And uh, we'll finish up with this uh, beautiful picture about unity of nations in the world. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, if we have time, please. Wonderful. Thank you so much, dear Professor Gigori Notkin, for this insightful presentation and inviting us to such a deep reflection. And uh, we will have some time now for questions. So please, if you are in the room here, you can raise your hand. I, I remind you again, you can go to reaction to the lower bar. There is the emoji, smiley. You push it, new window opens you can see there is a button raising hand like just I'm doing this. So you can do this if you want to have a, raise a question here live in Zoom. But there's also the possibility to raise questions written in the Zoom chat, also in the YouTube chat. So at this point, I don't see questions here in the room. Yasmin, please, do we have questions? Uh, coming from YouTube. Yes, thank you. We have a question. So one question from YouTube from Alexander Glushko and Alexander Hushko. Uh, is there a limit to diversity? Interesting question. Is there a limit to diversity? Is there a limit to diversity? That's an interesting question. All in all, there's probably a limit to diversity. Even though we see the extent to which different people in the world exist, different nations, different cultures, ideologies, religions, and this, uh, this, uh, this generality of human souls has some limit. I heard this expression, 600,000 souls. Maybe this is the limit to diversity. But this cannot get in the way of the unity in the world, as it happens in nature. A human, a human being is the same nature, but on the level of human speaking level. Uh, I think maybe there is some kind of limit, but it's very big, very, very large. Thank you for the question. Wonderful, thank you. So there is one question here I see in our room so i'm happy to give to our friend here the right to speak please go ahead you should be able now to unmute yourself yes uh, can you hear me yes yes okay we can thank hear you it. okay uh, what is upper choice what is upper purpose all of humanity because all of uh, people, single uh, purpose in a life. What is upper purpose? What is mutual purpose to convene all of humanity? Thank you. When, when, you, when you say upper purpose, do you mean higher higher purpose? Higher purpose? What's the higher purpose in versus one purpose of one single individual? Right. I get it. Thank you. So, I repeat the question again of our friend here. So what is the higher purpose versus the individual purpose that I'm only in my egoistic? Yeah, what's what's the contrast here? If you could answer this, please.
Thank you. Great question. This is actually the exactly the thing the whole this method of integral education is dedicated to because our goal is our, our natural uh, egotistic nature. It doesn't uh, really strive for this kind of state of solidarity and unity, but everything that's happening in the world, uh, good and bad, uh, there isn't only one good or bad, there is good and bad. Everything we see throughout the ages, centuries, how much the nations, uh, countries and groups of countries are uniting and we've reached uh, the level of globalization that's for now goes through a period of uh, problems and conflicts, but all in all humanity is developing and the final goal is the unity of the world uh, in all its diversity and keeping all the cultural forms in place and this is a way to a harmonious humanity i would even say a new civilization is something akin to a noosphere that uh, vernatsky talks about thank you thank you very much appreciating your answer and the question of course it really deepens our awareness so do you think yasmin we would have time for one more answer a uh, question and answer <laughs> Yes, the, we will have time. There's one question uh, from YouTube, from Larissa Kornilova. She's asking, how can we show humanity that our lives will be enriched a thousandfold if we put our opinions together instead of proving the merits of each other? Beautiful. Maybe you can read it again because it, uh, to really take it in. Yes, I will read again. So from YouTube, Larissa Kornilova is asking, how can we show humanity that our lives will be enriched a thousandfold if we put our opinions together instead of proving the merits of each other? Thank you. Beautiful question. For example, at least uh, that all the wars will be over on Earth because they the reason they happen is because one side uh, cannot yield to another and then this they uh, want to express their, their rightness in uh, conflict. And this is the way it's been for thousands of years and it happens still now. And if we learn, if people learn to uh, respect to... Uh, complement each other's opinions point point of view because we don't have the right uh, it's not that anyone is completely wrong it's just that ego limits the the vision of a nation and so on it's as it is, says a closed channel when a uh, when a person is stuck in, in a tunnel of reality, if people are in this tunnel of reality, uh, individuals and groups of individuals, they are closed in on their understanding, their imagination, and they cannot take into account the interests of other peoples, other nations. If we break these uh, obstacles between, the, between us, we'll uh, get to a new level of solidarity and understanding and the situation will improve. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Gregory Notkin. Thank you for this amazing presentation and in inviting us so into such a deep reflection. Thank you. So now, in just a few moments, we'll be taking a 10-minute break. So I hope you are all enjoying the first conference sessions and discussions so far. So... That's a great opportunity to stretch your legs, grab a drink or snack, use the restroom and network with fellow attendees. And before we do that, I would like to take a moment to express my deep appreciation for the privilege of moderating this conference and to be among this remarkable and diverse group of attendees. I hope you have enjoyed the conference so far. So please return in 10 minutes as we have two more exciting presentations and roundtable discussions coming up. And we will hear, we will listen to 
Dina Cohen, her presentation titled Minecraft Cutting Edge Tool for Integral Education and Dr. Alexander Averbach is Information Everything. So thank you. We'll see you back here in 10 minutes time. We will be back at 3.50 p.m. Central European time. See you then. How we behave in the city? Dear friends, today we will talk about nature in the city. Every city in the world has its own rules of conduct and its own traditions. Two brothers from Prague, Mati and Misha, will help us in our conversation. What is nature? Have any of us ever thought about nature? About nature in this city? Is the city also nature or it's something else? A different environment? The city is an artificial habitat created by humans. The city is a city nature. So the city is an environment created by humans? It's our big home. How should we behave in the city? The same way we do at home? Yes, just like at home. All people need to agree on how to behave in the city so that everyone is comfortable with each other. Let's talk about the simplest rules of behavior for people in the city. Keep it clean? Yes. Everyone should remember to throw garbage only in designer trash bins. What about dogs that do their business on the street? The dog owner should clean up after the dog. It is being respectful to people who walk the streets and in parks so that no one steps in it. How should we behave on public transportation? If we are traveling with friends, we talk quietly among ourselves. We don't shout in the tram or bus. We give up our seats to elderly people and pregnant women. Everything is interdependent. Respect for people is the main thing. The city is our artificially created world. We cherish it like our home. We don't scratch or draw on surfaces on public transportation. We don't graffiti on buildings. Yes, we establish the right relationships in the city. We help younger ones. Observing traffic rules is also very important. Yes, you can't cross on red light. You have to wait for green. Everywhere on the streets and in public places, it's important for pedestrians to give way to each other. We feel safe in the city where the right attitude is established. Dear friends, what is your favorite place in the city? The water park. Yes, we love going to the water park with our parents. It's our favorite place. We also like parks with the playgrounds. Welcome back again. So we are happy to welcome you back here uh, in our beautiful conference. So please let us prepare here for the second part of the conference. And we will have to see that we uh, are preparing for a beautiful presentation here. And um, it's maybe for some of us it's new. Uh, and this is good that it's new. Um, we, I want to, before we go ahead, I want to kind of give us an uh, orientation here for some of us maybe have joined us later in on YouTube or something. We continue our discussions on the role of science and education in the formation of an integral worldview in our changing. And uh, we will hear from a diverse group of speakers who will share their expertise and experiences on various topics related to that topic. So we have the topic of science and education in the formation of an integral worldview as an evolutionary necessity. We remind you that there are simultaneous translations available directly on Zoom in Russian, English and French. You can choose your language directly in Zoom, clicking on the globe on the bottom Zoom bar. You can see that little globe. You can push the button and you find your language. 
And for questions, we will be able to uh, ask our presenters to answer questions and we would like to remind you that they can be asked after the end of the presentation. Only those who have cameras on, turned on and raised their hand will be accepted in the Zoom room. Otherwise, you can also post your questions in our Zoom chat or on the YouTube chat for those who are watching us via the YouTube live stream. So, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our next speaker, Ms. Dina Cohen. Dina Cohen, actually, I met her in Israel and a friend uh, introduced me to her saying, she is excellent. I said, okay, so you get, a pre get prepared here for an excellent presentation now. So Dina uh, has an experience of 11 years in integral education. Dina has studied, taught and worked in various fields, including developing and delivering parenting courses, teaching primary school students. Her bachelor degree in science was obtained at the Hebrew University in Israel. She conducted research during her master's degree in education Gordon College of Education in Israel. She holds a teaching certificate and in addition, she holds certificates in computer science and business management obtained in Australia. Dina is an expert in developing and delivering integral educational content. During the COVID area, she was part of a team that developed Zoom connection games, educational content in virtual worlds and delivered gamification courses to children teens and adults on Zoom. Currently, Dina is an English teacher in a primary and junior high school in Israel, and she is also working with a startup team previously financed by the Israeli Ministry of Education, developing social content in the Minecraft computer game for schools. So we are diving right into the topic here. So the title of the presentation is Minecraft Cutting Edge Tool for Integral Education. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ms. Dina Cohn. Thank you Hello. so much, Joachim. And uh, I'd like uh, Kathy to join. And please, Kathy, we'll add you. There you go. Hello, Kathy. Thank you, Angelica, and like you, I've had this wonderful privilege of knowing Dina for about seven years now, and I too have admired her work, as many others do, from the very beginning. Both of us are educators and now immersed in integral education. Dina, would you please begin to demonstrate to all of us who are educators, parents, and those interested in new educational techniques, how you have successfully brought the concept of integral education into our world and also for those in the next generation. And now I present again to you, Dina Cohen. Thank you, thank you very much, Kathy, and thank you everyone. I will just uh, share the screen and I will just start. Just to tell the moderators, people are coming in, probably some of my friends. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Hello, Kathy. Hello, everyone. I am privileged and I'm very, very happy to be here today. And I thank all of you for showing interest in this topic. I trust that you will drive valuable insights from this pre presentation. Okay. In this presentation, I will expose an innovative approach to integral education through the integration of multiplayer gaming in virtual environment, environments, with a particular focus on Minecraft. To begin, I will introduce the social virtual school, of which I'm a part of, who we are and what our vision is. I will continue by exploring the culture, cultural significance of multiplayer gaming within virtual worlds. I will then proceed with a coincise description of integral education, laying out its objectives and main principles. Subsequently, I will clarify our perspective on leveraging this gaming phenomenon to enrich educational experiences for children, both in general, both in general education contexts and more specifically within the framework of integral education. 
Lastly, real life examples will be provided to illustrate the implementation of integral education goals and principles within the Minecraft platform. So as we are aware, visuals often convey more meaning than mere words. Therefore, let us begin by viewing a clip that provides insight into the social virtual school, please. Good morning, everybody. We're going into Minecraft again. Have you ever been to New York? Today you will be in New York. The virtual social program is a merger between gaming worlds and the educational worlds. We chose the most loved, the most well-known platform, Minecraft, and that is where we take them on a learning experience. They go on a journey where they learn many things in a tangible, experiential way, and all this while acquiring social skills and achieving a common goal. Are you ready? Good, so now we will take off. The kids in teams receive an assignment in the space station through an animation of the captain that presents their assignment on Earth. It's good to see you, team. We have a very serious problem to solve today. I am talking about the problem of global food waste. There are millions of poor and hungry people in the world. Today, team, you will try to offer a solution to this problem. You will land in Times Square in New York, that is in North America. They go to Earth, and that's where they execute their assignment. So they are teleported to New York. Your assignment today, team, is to gather food leftovers from restaurants and transfer them to the shelter in Chinatown. You can actually see them wandering in the streets of New York while sitting on their chairs in Petah Tikva. Wow, there are real shops here. All the shops in the street are the exact copy of the real street. They work with Google Maps in real and precise places in New York. Do you realize how much food is thrown away? In the chest there are packages of 80 kilo each. Through this they practice many skills, both social and emotional skills and knowledge skills. They have math calculations. In each package there is a hundred, so it's 1000 divided by 100. Then they have a piece of road that isn't built. So they need to calculate the area that they need to build. Geometry, geography and map orientation. They meet technical obstacles. That's called digital literacy, which is a very important skill for the 21st century. The escape isn't working. Try K. Oh, great job. In the Minecraft, there are many assignments, and you can see how each kid takes on his role. One is better in photography, the other is better in navigation, and they help each other. They call for help. You can see how it empowers them. When we prepare the kids today, we prepare them for a world of cooperation. We see that the world of the very talented doesn't exist anymore. Today, all workplaces look for teamwork capabilities, skills to lead and to be led negotiation skills and listening abilities come on but i don't know where i am wait for me here you are in 43rd street even if the other has a different opinion it's something that i can learn from him we need to take steaks i will take three chickens in the virtual world every child can be the hero and the best inside the team and the final result is something that all are proud of. It develops friendship and cooperation, and it reveals to you things that you didn't know exist within you. When learning in a virtual world, the emotional intelligence is developed. When do we learn? When we are happy, when we are having fun, when we feel pleased. If we are not pleased, maybe we will also learn if we feel pressure to succeed in the exam. So if I put the child in a place that he enjoys, learning will take place. What does this quote tell you? To care and love about the people around us and leave this illusion. Very good. Who wrote this quote? That is our assignment today. The name of whoever wrote the quote is the end entrance code to the assignment room. That's what we do. We let them dive into an experience where they are independent. They are the leaders. 
while they need to perform the academic activities given to them. It's Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, you are right. It's not that I copy from the blackboard, then I read and then I need to answer questions. It's not like this. It's an experiential way to learn. It's a fun way with friends and you learn from it without feeling it. I turn to all the teachers, try it yourself, you will benefit from it. Enjoy the experience like the kids, and then you will be able to enter the future with the kids. Friends, we need to end the lesson. There's nothing I can do, you will have a chance to continue next time. That is so intriguing, Dina. Would you tell us some more about the Social Virtual School? Yes, for sure. Uh, just one second. <laughs> I'm trying to do all this together with the screens and all. On. Just a minute. There we go. Okay. Yes, it is a very good clip, Kathy. So I will tell you, uh, at the onset of the coronavirus, uh, uh, the coronavirus restrictions in Israel roughly four years ago, and with children confined to their homes. Oren Leibovich, the head of the SVS team, founded the Social Virtual School. Oren assembled a team of educators and technical support, united by a common vision and goal, establishing a virtual school within a virtual world environment guided by the principles of integral education. Initially, we explored various virtual platforms engaging directly with children facing a lack of educational opportunities at home. As time passed and the children began returning to traditional schooling, our team continued experimenting with social virtual experiences, ultimately focusing on the Minecraft platform for further development. Upon realizing the challenges of, of obtaining permission to launch a standalone virtual school, we shifted our approach to integrating our technology within existing traditional educational institutions. We applied for support from the Israeli Ministry of Education's Research and Development Department. After being chosen from hundreds of other applicants, we embarked on two years of research and development within a standard primary school setting all the while receiving financial and pedagogical support from the Israeli Ministry of Education. Presently, as we come near to the end of our devel developmental phase, we are delivering our course to three groups of children, two groups physically in the classroom as part of an after-school activity, and the third group of kids we meet virtually on Zoom. We aim to finalize the developmental phase by the end of June 2024, with plans to offer our product next year to schools and after-school programs in Israel. The sluggish pace of development primarily stems from limited funding and the necessity to sustain ourselves financially while advancing our product. Rooted in integral education principles, our content and game mechanics and dynamics drive our curriculum. Currently, our focus lies on a 15 lesson course centered on sustainability, yet our pedago pedagogical structures can accommodate a broad spectrum of academic content. Development encompasses social, pedagogical and technical dimensions with technical aspects being collaboratively refined alongside Build the Earth, BTE, a community driven initiative aiming to recreate Earth within Minecraft on a one-to-one -one scale. I will now share my screen again. Just a second. Okay. Now I will provide a brief overview of the realm of gaming within virtual worlds. Multiplayer gaming in virtual worlds has become a defining cultural phenomenon among children and youth in the 21st century. Technological advancements have transformed gaming from solitary experience into vibrant communities with statistics showing widespread participation. 
Understanding this phenomenon is vital for grasping its profound impact on young lives globally. Before we delve into the practices of the Social Virtual School, I would like to define integral education and its key principles. Some of you may remember my last year's presentation regarding teaching integral education in school. This will be brief, so we are all on the same page. Yes, last year's presentation was excellent. We had numerous responses from our audience. Please make clear to this audience what integral education is and its key principles. Okay, so uh, there are some people in the waiting room just to tell the moderators. <laughs> integral education, goals and principles. Integral education as envisioned by its founder, Dr. Michael Lightman is a holistic approach to learning that emphasizes the comprehension development of individuals. It involves nurturing, not just intellectual growth, but also emotional intelligence, moral values, and spiritual awareness. Integral education recognizes the interconnectedness of all aspects of life and encourages individuals to understand their place within the broader context of humanity and the universe. It promotes self-reflection, mindfulness, social responsibility, and collaboration, aiming to empower individuals to lead purposeful lives while contrib contrib contributing positively to their communities and the world at large. This approach is often characterized by a focus on experiential learning, inquiry-based methods, and collaborative and interdisciplinary approaches to teaching and learning. When teaching integral education, the educator is required to constantly strive to strengthen and cultivate positive emotional connection between the group members. So now that we have a clearer comprehension of both gaming in virtual worlds and integral education, I can portray the methods through which the Social Virtual School integrates integral education principles into multiplayer virtual environments. This approach empowers children to derive benefits from all realms, indulging in the enjoyment and excitement of Minecraft while honing their social skills and acquiring knowledge. So let us start with a few principles that we have. The game is pre-structured by SVS and either a teacher or a moderator is present and overlooking the players during the lesson. In this way, we are able to control a large component of the social dynamics. Each lesson is structured around three key components, a narrative, a social value stemming from integral education principles, and a pedagogical topic. In addition to the activities within Minecraft, we cultivate desired social skills in students through exper experiential learning methods such as connection games, group sharing, discussions, role playing, and various interactive activities. I will now go and talk about some game mechanics and dynamics. In-game mechanics and dynamics are designed to foster social connection among participants by establishing environments where collaboration and teamwork skills are essential for successfully completing tasks. Following are several illustrative examples. So this is the good part. I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. Okay, here we go. Let's be kids for a little bit. In a specific lesson, participants are asked uh, our task, sorry, with crossing a lava stream to complete an assignment. The sole means of crossing the lava is by riding a strider, which is a Minecraft creature, as you can see in the picture. Riding the creature requires that each player should have several Minecraft items, such as a saddle, specialized food, and a stick. However, each player receives multiple copies of only one item needed necessitating collaboration and sharing among the, play the players for the team to accomplish the task successfully. This activity fosters skills in sharing and collaboration. 
I will now show you also how each lesson is accompanied by a player's guide. No, no, sorry. I'm going to stop this. This, sorry. We're going to go ahead. There we go. And one more. Hopefully it won't happen again. Nope. It did. Uh, sorry, just a second. I'm going to stop that one too. I just want to show you this player's gu player guide. So I can do it in a different way. Nope, it's not here. Let me just see. Okay, here we go. Can you see the player guide now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, so this is something that accompanies every lesson. If the kids are virtual, they receive it virtually and digitally. And if they're they're physically there, we, we give them a whole booklet in the beginning of the course. And each page is for each lesson. And here you can see they have a step-by-step -step instructions with pictures. They're asked here to look at the, the instructions in-game. This is an in-game instruction, this blue thing. And then they're asked to go through the path, walk up this beautiful um, building. And then when they get reach the top of the building, there's a roller coaster. First, they receive their, their prize, which is different types of armor. And then they go down on a roller coaster. And while they go down, which is really fun, very, very high buildings, they are asked to take a few pictures. Then they reach the pit where they have to ride the strider, what we talked about before. Then it, well, after they reach the other side of the lava stream, they go into the screens area where they can present their pictures. And this is uh, something, This we have different types of technology that our tech team um, actually pioneered. It, it doesn't, uh, other places in Minecraft don't have this, like the presentation of pictures, and you'll see some other aspects. So just to go on here, uh, here, there we go. Okay. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back a bit more. Okay. So in our following Minecraft, whoops, there we go. In our following Minecraft example, each team member must capture a photo of one puzzle piece. Only after each player presents their piece does the puzzle assemble, revealing a figure. The figure's name serves as the code to unlock the door, advancing players to the next stage. This game dynamic cultivates a sense of integral participation within the team. So here we can see... They put the pieces together and, it's Albert Einstein. and then they understand it's Albert Einstein. Okay. Another, another game dynamic that promotes teamwork involves in crafting a task that cannot be completed by a single player within a, within a designated time frame. All players must collaborate to achieve the objective effectively. In our next example, the entire group is tasked with producing a hundred loaves of bread. This comprehensive process, in, process involves sowing seeds, applying fertilizers, harvesting wheat, baking bread using the crafting table, and transporting the bread loaves to a truck. Upon reaching the goal of a hundred loaves, the gate to the horse table is unlocked, allowing players to embark on a ride in the nearby town, which for in this lesson is set to Middletown, Maryland, USA. Gina, are you saying that Israeli students are now in Middletown, Maryland, USA? <laughs> yes, yes, I am saying this, Kathy. We have geography and we use maps. As you've seen in the, in the first clip, we use maths, uh, uh, maps and we show them the real world versus the world within the Minecraft that BTE has created. Um, so it's really, really a lot of fun. They learn the geography in real time. And I'm going to show you here how they are. Each each field here is for a different team. 
teams of three and they're sowing, they're harvesting, they're creating uh, bread. In, and then you can see this person here, super glasses, he's running with his loaves of bread very, very quick to put in the truck, the blue truck in the chest. And you can see here, there's the um, uh, he's a counter. It says bread, 79 breads, now 67 breads. And the more loaves they put in, it, it counts now 56 and they need to make some more loaves and they quickly go back to make some more loaves of bread. And if you want to see that gate open, uh, then you'll have to join our lessons, Kathy. <laughs> okay. okay. <We> that. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We have pioneered the technology. We call it glue. And it effectively binds players together, restricting their movement so they cannot separate beyond a pre predefined distance. This innovative game mechanic fosters interdependence among players, leading to cultivation of mutual consideration. We'll now see how the glue mechanic works. And now we can see these two players. They're going into the hut. In the hut, they get the glue and they're binded together. Actually, there's three players here. You'll soon see. And the, the girl, they're going, they're continuing. We'll soon see the third player in red. There he, uh, there he is. And he will stop. Now look what happens when he stops. Whoops. You see that? They're glued together. And there's a banner coming up. You can only play. You can play only together. You can see the dynamics that we create with the mechanics. Okay. So to conclude, after four years of dedicated research and development, we have come to recognize the considerable potential of virtual worlds as an effective and adaptable platform for integrating integral education principles. Our commitment to furthering this initiative remains steadfast as we strive to achieve widespread adoption in schools and various educational environments. We're focused on expanding our product offerings to encompass additional courses across diverse content worlds. With optimism and conviction, we anticipate that through integral education in virtual realms, we can deeply resonate with children, offering enriching experiences that foster enjoyment, motivation for learning, and the refinement of social skills. And I would just like to end with these two quotes from the book of Proverbs. This, the, the sages said, train a child according to his way. Even when he grows old, he will not turn away from it. And this is what we're trying to do. We're training according to their way. What a better way than virtual worlds. And the next proverb for you shall wage war for yourself with strategies. Of course, teaching is not war, but sometimes we have these little battles with kids. And if we do it their way, this is what I call strategies using Minecraft. So that's it. Oh, Dina, our heartfelt thanks for the visionary work of you and your team. And it's all for the next generation. We look forward to your next presentation for eHood uh, in some months or the next year anyhow. If there's time, I, I would like to ask you a question. I think maybe many of us are thinking this. Are there other people or companies doing the same type of work? Yes, Kathy. There are some companies and people that are using Minecraft to uh, have fun with kids. Some are even teaching kids. There's Minecraft education that some schools use. However, none of them are using the integral education principles. Some of them are not using um, multiple player worlds. They're like Each kid is, works on his own in his own world. And if they are using multiplayer, sometimes it's more like competition. So I think we're basically the only ones that are trying to uh, create this kind of mechanism and, and game. Is there a way we could purchase your product? Well, as I said, we are in the uh, last stage of development. However, if you're interested in purchasing, we can adapt it to your needs and just contact us use my gmail i think i put it here at the end of the presentation um, if not I'll, I'll i'll put it up again just a second uh just one second i'll show my email and you're very very welcome 
sorry. Contact us, we'll be happy to talk to you and adapt our product to you. This is D-I-D-I-L-Y at gmail.com. This is my personal email and I will get you in touch with the whole team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Dina, and for giving this presentation, and also Kathy for co-presenting. So yeah, it's really fascinating huh, for, for us, for the adults, and you were asking us, let's be kids for a moment. Huh? So let's be kids, but also a little bit be an adult. Yeah? We don't want to jump on the table here. So let's see if we have questions here in our Zoom room. Again, you can raise your hand by going to the emoji uh, on the lower bar. You can raise your hand like this here, and then you can ask a question live. We still have that time. But if we don't have a friend here asking a question, Yasmin, do we have another question from the chat or in YouTube channel? Oh, here we here we go. There's a question. Let's let's take the question here uh, because it's great to hear. Please, if you want to unmute yourself. I can't hear. Is it just me? I can't hear anything. Okay, Dina cannot hear you. I will hear you and will say it again, the question. Right. Okay. So, so I'm hearing you were asking about adults if they can use it. So, uh, Dina, if you can hear me here, the uh, our friend is asking if how can we use this what you developed here with your friends uh, for adults? Maybe there's a person who never drove a truck. You could drive a truck in Minecraft or connect with others the way you were sharing it. So. How can adults use the system you developed? Okay, so let me just start by saying that I think adults are just very tall children, or maybe sometimes we say children are very short adults, but it, you know we're both. And um, for sure, adults need education uh, for cooperation, for collaboration, for uh, teamwork. Everyone in this world, I think, needs this type of education. And you can actually see what while we teach these kids that start with no, no uh, education for co collaboration, after a few lessons, they, they're actually starting to look at each other and helping each other and looking at this, themselves as a team. So I'm sure that this type can also help adults, you know, the adults that are drawn to this type of, of gaming. For sure, we can, uh, we can adapt it for grown-ups as well and to their worlds, just using special mechanics that create this type of um, uh, social skills, I guess, and uh, teamwork and what we believe in. Great. Thank you, Dina. So let's, let's see. I think we have uh, time for at least one more question. Yasmin, would you, do you have another question here from written from YouTube or? Yes. We have one more question I saw from social media. It's uh, anonymous. 
Considering potential concerns about screen time and digital ad addiction among children, how does Mrs. Dina Cohen address the balance between utilizing multiplayer gaming like Minecraft for educational purposes and mitigating the risk associated with excessive screen time? Do you want me to repeat? No, it's okay. I understand the question. It's a very good question. Um, yeah, like so, like I said, the first thing that really helps with all the disadvantages of the gaming is that we construct the the worlds and we it's, everything is pre-constructed, everything is safe, um, the dynamics are safe because sometimes when the the problems of going into the uh, Minecraft, um, not and uh, not being overlooked, you know, sometimes kids can go into conflicts and competition, and there are some negative parts, uh, aspects to it. Uh, about screen time, uh, yes, you know, it's not like we're gonna, we think that the whole school needs to be on screen. Of course, we believe it, that the physical is very important, but it is uh, another way. And like I said, it's something that the kids do anyway. So instead of uh, you know, battling the screen time, let's do it what they like and what we like at the same time, what we want to gain from this for them and what they want to gain. And, we, you know, just combine them. In Hebrew, we, there, there used to be a, a, a advertisement of uh, yogurt. And it for him, it, it was it's a sweet yogurt. And it, it said, for him, it's a treat. And for for the mom, it's milk, like it's uh, calcium and everything that we want the kids to have. So this is basically what we want. We want them to enjoy themselves, but at the same time, we want them to learn how to connect and to talk to each other and to collaborate and to work towards uh, each other and not against each other. Wonderful. Thank you, Dina. So... Maybe we even have time for one more question. Is there another question, Yasmin, we want to take? Yes, thank you. So the other question coming from YouTube. For regions without internet, what could be the alternative? Physical connection games. I can teach you some of those as well. <laughs> I don't know. It's like that we're we're in this uh, virtual world because the internet is much stronger, because technology is much stronger. So yes, it is very dependent on that. Great. So, is there another question? Otherwise, I would have a question. Uh, we have a little bit more time. Yasmin, do we have another question uh, pending? No. Okay. So, because I was curious about. Adina, you were sharing about this beautiful, you are creating dynamics and you create mechanics to create dynamics, relational dynamics. So there's a strong, as you shared in the video, so there's a glue here and it's all connected, at what I heard, to values. And I think this is a big thing in contrast to other video games who maybe also have values, but not, maybe not integral values. So could you share more? What is, it sounds like there's a kind of triangle of value, dynamic and mechanics. So could you share more about the value issue here, please? Yes, thank you for this question because it is the very important part of our um, mission. Um, it's it's we I used to create uh games I still do create games physically and it's we have different mechanics in the game so for instance uh regarding competition there is no competition and if there's competition it's against the time not one against the other all right so this uh creates a um a, a feeling of of oneness of a group and not one against the other also um so in order to create this, like this is a dynamic that we want. We want to feel a part of the group. So this is the dynamic that we we want. And the mechanic will be that the, the goal is for the whole group. It's not like two groups, one two groups against the other or one individual against the other. That's the mechanic. And it's the, so the goal, if you want to succeed the task, the whole group needs to collaborate. 
and that's the the mechanic and that's a dynamic and that's the value yeah. it's and just an example value. and we have more yeah. like you said you know with the glue thing we were uh in the beginning we, we didn't know if the kids will enjoy it you know who likes to be glued together but they had fun they wanted they asked it again every every meeting we also have a reflection at the end of the of the lesson for 10 minutes and we ask them what did you like what did you want what do you want and we get lots of good feedback from the kids so we can develop our uh, product even better for them great so kids want to have glue here they want to be glued together that's what i'm hearing so we have another two minutes so i'm challenging our time a little bit but i see that hannah golod is uh, here and wanting to raise a question i would like to give her the chance um please go ahead um you can you please unmute uh yeah i would like to ask dina to say a couple words about the possibilities uh, to create a possibility just uh yeah for communication of children from different countries so uh, the question what I'm hearing is, is there a way from kids from different countries speaking different languages, is there a way that they could also connect through your game? Is, the, is this what the, the question is? I hope so. So if, is there a if chance kids to... come from different countries can come together. Right. Yes. With yes, different sure. languages also, right? And different languages, wow. Okay, so let's just start with the, if it's the same language, then for sure, like on Zoom, like we're doing it. I am I live in the south of Israel and I'm, I'm, I'm meeting a group uh, that each of them is from different places around Israel. Um, and for different languages, we can uh, do it. Uh, if like, for example, right now in Zoom, right? We have different uh, languages and we have translations. So yeah, and you know, kids are kids and you know, I, I'm an English teacher, all right? And um, the, I teach kids uh, aged uh, 10, 11, 12. The kids that are the best in English in Israel are the kids that are playing gaming, that are doing playing in, multi, in virtual worlds, multiplayer virtual worlds. My son, when the corona started, the whole, a whole year he stayed at home and he had no social connections, but he did have social connections with other players that are playing Minecraft. So this is a real, very, very big thing for, for kids. And, and yeah, we can, with, with uh, technology, we can do anything, I'm sure. And it, it's only getting better. Great. So thank you. Thank you, Dina. We are a little bit over time. Apologize for this, but it was so interesting. Thank you so much. Appreciating your presentation. And thank you very much, everybody. So we keep going and i just want to give you a heads up like we have another presentation now and after this we will have a round table discussion just to give you like an idea what's going on so the next presentation here is by dr alexander averbach he holds a phd in chemical process technology and equipment as well as uh, an msc in optics and spectroscopy dr averbach's expertise spans across various scientific research fields with notable contributions in designing laser Doppler nanometers for investigating turbulent flows, studying turbulent flows and mixing in static mixers and exploring high concentrated suspension flows using laser Doppler nanometers. His work also extends to the design of systems for measuring light scattering characteristics of high concentrated suspensions and water management in power plants. Additionally, Dr. Averbach has made significant contributions to the improvement of equipment for various chemical processes, including mixing and thermo and mass transfer. With over 20 publications to his name, Dr. Averbach's research has garnered widespread recognition and admiration in the scientific community. His dedication to advancing our understanding of complex phenomena within chemical engineering and related disciplines is truly commendable. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Alexander Averbach's presentation titled, Is Information Everything? Please go ahead, Mr. Aberbach.
Hello. I'm happy to greet everyone, everyone present at our conference. The, my presentation will be dedicated to the concept of information, as we announced. Information plays a very important role in the modern world. Although the same way as it happens with concepts that are fundamental to our nature, there is, uh, there is no commonly accepted definition of this concept. I took this quote from uh, Norbert Weiner, uh, one of the fo uh, founders of cybernetics. Uh, this quote, it's impossible to prove that nature is governed by laws, but without the belief that nature is governed by laws, there can be no science. So, yes. So, the same Vina said his phrase that, uh, that emphasizes this information from informatio in Latin, meaning data, messages, or notification, or information. In our time, until the 30th, the 30s of uh, the 20th century, the concept of information was used in its uh, standard meaning of uh, information, data, data messages and notification. But in the 60s, uh, Claude Shannon suggested a quantitative uh, measurement of information quantitative assessment of information, and after several years, the French physicist Brillouin linked information with the measure of order in the system. Uh, he, he introduced the concept of negentropy as opposed to entropy, a measure of disorder, as we know. So, negentropy uh, characterizes a measure of order. And he suggested to measure this opposite concept in the same, using the same scale as entropy. And these um, new ideas were the beginning of informational boom. There were new theories connected to this information theory of uh, uh, management of information and so on. But in general, these theories were more about the form of uh, expressing information. The science that studies this is called semantics. But the essence of information is the meaning that's passed on, so the interpretation of these signs that are in the message. It's clear that this meaning can be conveyed with different signs, and the important thing is to know the code that connects the signs and the meaning that they carry. This semiotics, this, the study of sem semiotics, uh, studies this link. Um, on the interaction of uh, natural and uh, formal languages. As we point out, information was not always used in our modern time. For example, in the Divine Comedy of uh, Dante, the beginning of the 14th century, 
he is the Latin root informer to, uh, to define the, the primary, uh, denote the original essence from which creation is formed. Modern science also comes to similar conclusions. The 1960s saw the emergence of the hypothesis that our universe is a computer simulation. Soon, different versions of this theory began to appear. Uh, so the renowned physicist John Wheeler proposed the it from bit theory, meaning everything is in this, in the bit. According to this theory, all physical objects are fundamentally immaterial. They have an information theoretical basis. So the ideas of the idea that there is an informational basis, foundation, they also came from uh, the ancient Greeks. Aristotle to the five, added to the five uh, forces of nature, uh, air, water, fire and, uh, and earth added added the idea of ether and Plato thought that everything comes from ether. Closer to our times, uh, René Descartes in the, in the 17th century brought back the concept of ether. And then what is ether is some kind of an, a place where an environment where light um, propagates or different objects connect together. It doesn't have material characteristics, so to speak. It cannot be, um, can be constricted, it doesn't have a weight, and so on. And the peak, so to speak, of the paradigm connected to ether, where during the days of James Maxwell, he used the concept of ether in which uh, electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic waves propagate. Then this concept uh, began to disappear from the scientific lexicon and because there were famous uh, uh, Mittelson and Morley experiments that the, the speed of um, propagation of electromagnetic waves uh, is not affected. And then Einstein uh, showed that these waves can spread in a vacuum and do not need any additional environment. But scientists always had this thought that something had to be the reason for the emergence of our universe and many seemingly from nothing, and other scientists added their concepts. One of the creators of um, quantum mechanics, Paul Dirac, uh, added the concept of physical vacuum, such an environment. Actually, it wasn't vacuum. It was something filled up with virtual particles. On average, they could not be detected, but this environment could interact with the material universe and influence it. Uh, Einstein's students, one of the great physicists of uh, our times, uh, David Bohm, built his uh, alternative quantum mechanics where the main, the foundation of everything was the quantum potential, so-called quantum potential. Bohm's version is lacking many uh, disadvantages of the Copenhagen uh, approach. 
we can say the hypothesis of uh, ether and similar ideas are meant to explain the paradox of the universe, universe's emergence from nothing. And many feel that they have the intuitive feeling that nothing can come from nothing. Modern science uh, comes to the theoretical explanation that everything really appeared from some informational environment. One of the forefront theories is called uh, is, is called exactly this, the theory of informational uh, appearance, uh, informational birth of the universe. According to this, according to the current uh, perception of our universe, the only thing that existed is an uh, informational scale of field. It was a quantum reality contained that contained neither matter nor energy nor time and space. But from this informational reality, the perceptible world appeared. The second theory, that everything appeared from a non-material uh, sphere, is formed by topological structures of the vacuum. So it's not emptiness, rather something, uh, something that exists in potential. It is not it doesn't exist. And many uh, today reach the conclusion that for information, the uh, law of preservation also exists, similar to physical laws. Uh, for example, like we see in mass and energy. But the laws of conservation are a result of conservation in information. I would like to like to shift to a different area where information is also important. We are speaking of the phenomenon of consciousness. And here we also use the analogy, the computer analogy. The computer is made up of physical parts and the program that the programmer enters and that controls the activity of the computer. So the analogy is uh, similar to the physical uh, the physical object that does this uh, in in us is the brain the most complex uh, object we we can study and the consciousness has a purely informational nature but here the there are many eternal questions that we had throughout our existence of our civilization who is the programmer that created all this does he have a goal and maybe who created this programmer and so on But if we get back to the consciousness, there are scientists that assert that information is the fundamental quality of universe. Consciousness is uh, only uh, expressed in a clear way in a human, but uh, those that uh, deal with animals, they also see that uh, dogs have this for example, and they have proof. 
the direction called panpsychism is is that we are parts of the general whole but because there are objects that um, make up this whole then then this consciousness needs to exist in the most elementary particles they the smallest particles also have some small forms of consciousness and uh, the followers of panpsychism uh, are growing if we look look at nature the levels of evolution of matter if we look at uh, the nature around us the inanimate the next the objects that appeared have a much bigger informational saturations the objects of living nature um, such as vegetative animal and human and the levels of matter with bigger organization high levels of organization are perceived their parts are more uh, interconnected more strongly linked between them the informational their saturation is much higher and the form of their organization uh, correspond to higher manifestations of consciousness and in humans it reaches the maximum so here there is a question is it possible for higher levels of organization of matter to appear from lower levels of matter through natural evolution as materialists think that some processes when through uh, occurred in uh, inanimate inanimate uh, nature that somehow life appeared and actually what none of these hypotheses were proven uh, actually were disproven and these uh, these ideas actually contradict the law of preservation of information as as we know according to the second law of thermodynamics uh, an isolated system that doesn't um, exchange information with the external environment external world it uh, de degrades and the amount of information uh, goes down if we have a transition to systems that have less system uh, from a system that has less information to a system that has more information then where where does this information come from surely there needs to be a source of this information outside of this system and it needs to be open and here we seemingly surface level uh, surface level uh, attempt to touch these questions this um, makes us assume the following that the source of information is uh, uh, this level that has more information has to precede the source that was responsible for the creation of matter of a lower level if we assume that there is some information space no matter what we call it then it's mirror it mirrors matter if in the matter we see a transition from more primitive objects to more complex ones in the informational uh, space this needs to be the opposite there more highly organized structures have to form earlier then have to precede the less organized ones the evolution goes seemingly from 
uh, from up downward. There are also archaeological uh, findings. There are discoveries uh, that show that there were um, individuals of animals, uh, doesn't matter, in the living um, nature that had organs that they didn't actually need. And these organs, they became, became necessary only to the following generations. That nature knows the future. Here, I would like to go to the following. There is a very ancient wisdom called Kabbalah, and there all these questions are, are described in the most, in the fullest sequence. It talks about what this informational environment is about, the mechanism of this uh, formation. And we can also find many questions where uh, modern science has stopped and cannot understand what is going on. And at the end, I'd like to say that we today are witnessing clear signs of a crisis. The word crisis has a different meaning. It means it also signifies birth. And it's entirely possible that this crisis is connected to the fact that we are on the verge of some transition possibly to higher forms of consciousness and this transition will be much more significant than the transition from inanimate nature to living and this has to do with information that we use to uh, get all of our progress. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Aberbach, for this insightful presentation. So, yes, let's see. We are a little bit over time, but still, this is the way it is when we have interesting topics. So let's see if we have questions here in our Zoom room. If you want to raise a question, please raise your hand and uh, then we could hear you live. It doesn't look like it, so maybe we have a question. Do we have a written question, Yasmin? Yes, there are two questions. I don't know if we have time, but the first one from the YouTube channel, English channel, from Lunea. In light of Dr. Avabas presentation, what about the ethical implementation implications of viewing information as a primal principle of the universe. How might this perspective influence our approach to technology and societal structures? Спасибо. Ну, в общем-то, этические проблемы, конечно, связаны с развитием. Science and it seems to me that humanity is not uh, an exception and our path, if we take 
into consideration. The good path is unity of humanity into one superorganism that will have this super consciousness, thanks to which we will be able to directly enter and feel this informational field that created everything. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have here. So thank you again for this wonderful presentation. And um, from here, we take it seamlessly to transition to our next segment. So um, we will have to uh, go to a round table discussion. So that's interesting now because in other events, maybe you have seen round table discussions. They are like on the stage, there's a panel of presenters. They sit around the table and then they talk. Now, this is not integral. We want to do it differently. Integral is we all sit on the round table together around one big table all over the world, spanning the whole world here. Everyone, ha everyone he and she has the place. And we will exchange ideas and perspectives all together. And we will weave our wisdom here uh, in regards to our topic, science and education in the formation of an integral worldview as an evolutionary necessity. And so we are encouraging you to participate and to find the questions, the insights, the contributions together. Before we do that, there's a, there are some rules to really be able to go ahead and to do, have a wonderful integral round table educational uh, discussion. So let's see first and watch first a short YouTube video here, please. Exactly. Rules of the round table. Around the table, no one is more important or less important. Everyone is equal and very important. We don't reject opinions or negate, but only collaborate. The real solution won't come from knowledge or verbal perfection, but only from our connection. Great. So I hope this was understood. Some simple rules to make it happen, to actually have a round table around the world. So, as you know, we, in these discussions, we want to find answers to burning questions. And when we thought about it, we found like, well, we have, of course, questions, but we want to draw upon your wisdom to find the right question. Because what we find is that it's actually a very high level of wisdom to find the precise questions, because this is what guides us to the result that we are heading for, that we have a goal to go to. So we are asking, we don't want to give you the question and then you give the answers. We want to first find the question that we want to actually talk about. So that's the next step. That's the next level we want to go with you. And you are asked to include your wisdom in this. To We want to draw upon the collective wisdom because every quest begins with a question and the question guides us ahead. So we are asking you now to take a moment we had today five presentations. The first presentation was about neuropedagogic insights. So it was a, the brain development of kids left right, and right hemisphere. Second presentation was about the comprehension of reality. How do we perceive reality? Third one was difference as a necessity to find unity. Fourth one was about Minecraft and was about cutting edge tools playing and gaming online. And the fifth one was the informational age and how we perceive information. So we had beautiful presentations. So when you allow yourself to be precise as much as you can, like what's the burning question now we should look at? We don't want to, again, we don't want to answer them now. We want to first find the question 
What is the question we should look at now as a collective? What is burning in your heart? What is burning in your mind? So take a moment, please. And if you find a question that we should all look at, and after this we, we collect the question, then we vote what question is the first one we want to look at. So we have a little bit of a challenge here, but uh, I'm sure we have a great collective intelligence here. So what is, let's collect beautiful burning questions we want to have, like we want to look at. What is the question you would like us to look at? Please go ahead and raise your hand. And it's fine if it, nothing coming in the first thing. And maybe you have a question you're not totally sure how to formulate this. We can help each other here. Just allow yourself to express your longing, your need. What is it you would like to look at? Again, if you are ready, you can uh, raise a hand. Uh, with the emoji here and there's a hand uh, uh, Yasmin is raising her hand so let's hear her yes so my first burning question that comes up uh, in the in the now it would be what do we need to add or to draw in order to come to that place or position where we can use our collective wisdom together in beneficial way. I write it down. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. So this is an example of a burning question here, how we can proceed to find the next step. And I'm reading it again, the question that Yasmin is bringing. So let me find it here scrolling down what do we need to add or to drop in order to come to a position where we can use our collective wisdom together in mutual beneficial ways i think it's beautiful because we want to sometimes add and sometimes we need to leave things behind some things need to die before before we can move and expand and go to the next level so that's great we have two more burning questions here please let's start uh, i didn't see where who was first so let's start uh, so there's a sign here so that's collective wisdom uh, please please Ephraim Eliav, please um, please unmute yourself <clears throat> thank you very much uh, joachim it's it's really a very wonderful way of uh, organization of the roundtable discussion and uh, my question will be probably some kind of uh, uh, continuation of what uh, Jasmine uh, asked. Um, what is the best way to introduce integral laws in your close um, vicinity, like uh, uh, family, friends? What uh, do, do you think? How it's uh, what? What is the best way to proceed there? Wonderful. So what's the best way? It's kind of, it's it's adding to what Yasmin said. And if you would please write it down also on the Zoom chat so we can read it later on and we all have it in front of us. Thank you so much. So next one will be Dina. Please go ahead, Dina. Thank you. So um, yeah, um, as a teacher, I uh, strive all the time to bring in all the integral education uh, rules um and and methods and everything however you know and even though i get so much uh positive response from other teachers manage school managers and everything they say yes it's true we need to teach the children how to work together and not against each other however they all you know they all go they all give them these competitions and and i mean of course i also have some competition but it, it's it's like they they believe in it but they don't really apply it so what can we do in order to i mean i don't know what what can we do but what are the reasons why are, why are they not applying it why are they still i don't know stuck in the old ways um of comp competing and using this uh you know because when you compete two children together compete then they have uh, an urge a motivation and, and they're using this this compete com competition motivation in order to get them to learn. But how can we? What can we do? Uh, what what are the reasons? 
that they're not using and they're not really, really understanding what they should and shouldn't do in order to get the kids to be together as a group. Great. So uh, what I'm hearing is why uh, is it so hard to implement to not go comp keep competing? So why? what's the challenge here? And thank you, Dina. Please write it down uh, also in our chat here. And I see, I think there are more questions in the chat um, coming in. But let's hear first. We have two more friends raising their hand, please. Andri, uh, please, if you would. Uh, um, uh, can you unmute yourself? Um, yes, please. Да, здравствуйте. Я очень рада с вами быть. Давно искала вас, и я как психолог, работающий с подростками. У меня вопрос. Yes, hello. Как... I'm so glad to be together with you. I was looking for you for so long, and as an um, educator uh, working with uh, teenagers, I have a question: how to connect all of it and to introduce it into my work? Uh, to um, uh, in my work when working with teenagers, it's an old question that I have. Great, thank you. How to integrate this, the insights into the work as a teacher is what I'm hearing. Please also write it down in our Zoom chat. Next one is here, please, our friend Atulion. Um, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel, uh, can you hear? Okay. Uh, I feel uh, this is a treasure for us because uh, all of people, all of language, all of nations in here and speak peacefully and joyfully. And we want to achieve high level of consciousness. Uh, what we do, what we do and how can we disseminate this treasure, all of humanity, all of people find this material, find this treasure, and will all of think, uh, I want to uh, find this uh, question. Uh, well, not question. Right. I want to right. find this answer. Thank you. Yes, you, you, you found the question. Uh, beautiful. Thank you. So how can we disseminate the treasure that we have had here today uh, to, to the whole world is what I'm hearing. Please also write it down in the Zoom chat. Thank you. And here we have, so let me try to read Kyrillic. Um, hmm. I'm sorry, can you please unmute without me trying to speak Russian? <laughs> Yes. Yes. yes, thank you very much. Enormous gratitude uh, for this conference. The uh, heart is jumping out uh, of joy. And the uh, previous uh, colleague, a great uh, friend, asked what I wanted to ask. All five presentations were dedicated to basically the same topic. How can we find the harmony in the world and pass it on to the whole world, to the rest of the world. So the question is, how can we work uh, by adding to each other uh, that the world could hear us uh, and we will not need to run somewhere, but by uniting here to let uh, the world feel sensitively uh, that we are ready to pass on to give everything that we were giving great so there's a little bit thank you so much spasiva for this question so uh, it's all again about how can we spread the, uh, the message uh, today that we heard so beautifully that we are ready that the world knows we are ready to spread the good news is what i'm hearing and uh, so uh, let's see if i think we have a, a number of beautiful beautiful questions here so now again what we have now is in our tr treasure chest we have beautiful questions and now we want you because we said we want to draw upon your collective intelligence. So now let's use our collective intelligence. What's the most important question that we should take a look at? 
from your inner perspective, from your point of view, you, there's no need to be objective, trying to be objective, your point of view, what is the most important? So we will read the questions again. And after reading then, we will ask you to give, to vote. How do we vote in integral education? We vote with our hearts, of course. We want to be with our mind, but also with our hearts. So I'm going to show you. You have on the lower bar, you have the reaction button and you go there, you push it, and then you would see a heart. And this is also what uh, Yasmin did before. Here we have a heart. So if exactly so this is how you we show our heart it's always we always hear that you should show our heart we should open the heart so here we can try we can rehearse so when we read the question exactly i see lots of hearts beautiful and um, when we read the question we want to see and please if you could open your camera so we know that who's showing his or her heart would be great otherwise it stays uh, hidden. So if uh, you please could open your camera if it's possible. So and then we I will read um, from back to top. We will read the question again. And, um, and we will see what's going on and uh, how many hearts we see. Um, So there's a question. I think this was not for us. It's for Dina and Oren. So there's a question here. How can we share this treasure is one question uh, that a friend was asking. So and you can we, you don't need to show your heart only once. I, I forgot to mention you. We have lots. You have a big heart, right? So you can take show your heart whenever you feel it's ready so please how can we share this treasure if you want to delve into that question you can show your heart right now so what do we see here we have three four hearts i'm seeing five there was one more okay so that's great oh there's another one coming sometimes we need time to open our hearts no more okay <laughs> maybe we need to wait we'll have some more minutes here uh, okay so i see uh, i think i counted like seven hearts okay let's go let's move ahead and we go up 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 and then another question what are the reasons that educators are not implementing strategies to create connection between students, even when they agree it's important. Saying it again, what are the reasons that educators are not implementing strategies to create connection between students, even when they agree it's important? So would you like to delve into that question? If so, please show your heart. And you want to you wanna feel if it's a burning question for all of us, right? You want to be a voice for the collective here. So, okay, I want to, there's, I think there was a heart already vanishing. <laughs> can we help, can, can I get help with the math here? <laughs> so I think I'm counting uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The hearts are vanishing too, too fast. I think there was a little bit more of hearts. I see maybe eight hearts. So let's have a scale of hearts here. So, so to weigh the heart here, okay. And let's go for the next question. And you, you know, I just want to invite you to feel the process here, how beautiful it is, the way we connect, the way we find the question. I think it's part of our process, right? So next question, what is the best way to introduce integral laws in your close vicinity? Example, family, friends. Again, what is the best way to introduce integral laws in your close vicinity, meaning family and friends. So, what what are the hearts here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, I think that's quite a lot here. I think I counted twelve hearts. Wow, there's a lot of heart here around. So we have like okay. So we didn't uh, see all of the questions. Uh, let me find, um, I, I don't want to um, miss out here. 
Uh, let's, I, I think there's a new, no, nine. Oh, there was a counting here helping me. There were more questions, but I think maybe the friends did not write them down. So I also heard the question that how can a teacher implement insights we heard today? I'm, I'm, I'm maybe simplifying, I'm sorry, but I heard about like how can a teacher implement the work in the work uh, that we heard today, like implemented in the work with kids. So how about this question, uh, implementing it as a teacher, our uh, um, wisdom here in TQL education? Um, do we see some hearts here about this? Maybe this is part of a bigger question that we had before. Maybe it's included, this question and the other question, right? So we, we see that um, it's important for, for some of us, but not for all of us. So, oh, okay, so there was the first question coming from Yasmin, now I see it. What do we need to add or to drop in order to come to a position where we can use our collective wisdom together in mutual, mutual beneficial ways. Again, what do we need to add or to drop in order to come to a position where we can use our collective wisdom together in mutual beneficial ways? Okay, I see lots of art. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I saw eight hearts here. That's quite good. Maybe it's second. Um, and thank you for that. I am wondering if I missed out on a question that was raised, or did we have all questions now? Please support me here <laughs> in the collective mutual uh, effort. Is what's the sign? Ah, there's a sign like in the chat. Uh, I see another question. What uh, is this? What uh, what are some implications and next steps from all we heard today? Is that another question? I think it was raised. By Mario, not, not um, verbally, but here in the chat. What are some implications and next steps from all we heard today? So, can we please see some hearts if in regards to that question? One, two, six. I see six hearts. Seven. Well, great. I think it's all. The longer we take, uh, the, the more hearts are coming. <laughs> It's great. So, what was before? I we go ahead. Did I miss out on anything here, or can we go? Can we proceed? Can we proceed? Is that okay? Okay. I see nodding heads. Great. So that's also part of the process. We want to include. We want to be inclusive here. Otherwise, we don't want to leave anyone behind. We sit on the big round table around the world. So, what I hear as a the burning, the most burning question here, maybe we have more time for other questions that also were here, is what our friend Ephraim Eliav our, uh, said. And, and please, if you would raise the question again by yourself, so let, let us feel this person that brings the question. It's always there's a vibration in it. We want to feel that and we want to go ahead with it. So please, if you could unmute yourself again and say the question again. Okay, uh, with a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, what is the best way to introduce integral laws in your close vicinity, like uh, family, friends, etc.? Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's let this question land. What are the best ways to let all this, what we heard like today and the integral wisdom land in our vicinity, uh, like family, friends, the integral laws. So let's find answers now. We found questions, now we want to find answers. And again, we do so by uh, raising the hand. So what is your answer to it? What's your insight? What can you do in your close vicinity? Just to take a moment, um, maybe it's not so easy huh, to find an answer. So let's take a moment. Do we also want to be aware of all the different layers of, of that? 
sometimes it's easier to tell a colleague about it maybe than to the close family because there's emotional uh, uh, like there are emotions in, involved and maybe there's a little bit clumsy or whatever's happening for us right so we want to include the emotional aspect here of that and uh, so let's hear we have uh, the first answer and we want to collect more answers here and um, there are two friends and uh, as we have not heard from Lalif before I would like to give uh, her the first uh, answer please thank you thank you uh, for all your wonderful efforts to all of you how can we introduce integral laws to the ones around us starts with perception and empathy that's i think the first dominant virtue that we should all be aware of what we should first think and feel that we all come from the same root we are all parts of the same creation this will start leading us to this feeling of disseminating or uh, maybe sharing the idea of integrity with others and besides the ones around us are somehow not by chance but somehow according to the laws i believe are the ones that we should get connected first so that's the one those are the ones that we should just try to experience how we can manage perception and empathy and by just walking on this path with the others the closest ones we can just find ourselves getting into a larger area maybe into the ocean of feelings and thoughts where we can easily more easily deal with these laws the laws have been created or formed just for us for our awareness so this is just my summary for this Great. question thank you thank you thank you so beautiful and uh, we have lots of uh, friends here raising the hands so please if you really want to find the gist of it we have about another eight ten minutes the gist of it what is it what's your answer what's your take on this question so let's move uh, uh, again uh, to learn please go ahead i'm sorry for pro wrong pronunciation
Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And please, our presenter here is the next on my screen. I can see Dr. Averbach. Please go ahead. Да, спасибо. Я слушал беседы одного мудреца, который дал, с моей точки зрения, очень дельный совет. Он сказал так. Мы с женой договорились каждый следующий день нашей жизни начинать с нуля. Все, что было вчера, неделю тому назад, не существует. Мы забываем о нем и не пользуемся. Мы каждый день начинаем с нуля, и хотим достичь вот такого единства. Все, спасибо. Beautiful, thank you. So next, please, if you put, I'm gonna unmute you. Yes, yes, thank you. I want to share the thing that um, we have a women's circle. There are several, sometimes 10, sometimes eight women, even even more, the Russian-speaking women. Once a week, uh, on Saturdays, we watch uh, clips uh, with uh, um, quotes from wise men, how uh, they speak about uh, raising the family, teaching the kids, how we build relationship uh, among ourselves. And then we make a, a workshop, a seminar, we talk, and not uh, like once or twice, but uh, this uh, this continues for already for the fourth year in a row. And it uh, we, we feel the effect of it, and it's, it's becoming uh, more and more interesting every time. And this morning, today, we discussed the topic uh, on uh, thoughts that I don't allow a bad thought to exit me into the surrounding uh, in the environment uh, and how, how we deal with it. And it was very interesting. Спасибо. Thank you. Dina, please. Um... Thank you. Thank you very much, Joachim and everybody here. And thank you for all the people that were saying uh, the previous uh, uh, suggestions. I agree with everyone. And um, so we, we need to understand that uh, first we need to know what the integral principles are before we want to implement them. So this is that that's the learning phase that the previous uh, woman was talking about. She was listening to... Uh, suggestions from uh, Michael Lightman, but there are other uh, ways to do that. But uh, what, and what she was saying is basically a few women together are listening. And then these women are probably, I'm, I'm sure they're talking about it. Like we're doing this right now with this round table, they're doing their round table. And this is all about, so if, if we, we say when we want to teach integral education, we, uh, it has to come from some kind of integral, um, thought. All right, so the women are listening to something that we're talking about. They're sharing uh, what what happens in their life. They're talking about how we can make it better, and then they're going home and doing it, and then they're coming back with the um, with the results, and and they're sharing that as well. So this is the best way to actually introduce integral education to a family and the best place to start integral education in your life is in the family thank you thank you so we have three more let's see that we can make it please grace go ahead thank you so much um i was trying to think about this question in a very practical way and um, just about sort of daily interactions with friends and family and work and, and whatever it is. And I, I thought of sort of two areas where we could start to think about how we might integrate the principles of integral education. And one of them is when we have disagreements of some sort with people um, you know, little disagreements, maybe not the biggest disagreements, but how we handle those disagreements and how we have a possibility to bring out certain features, how both sides of the disagreement contribute something 
and that there is a kind of there can be a unity above it so so there's just one area and another another area is when we're making decisions and other people are involved and you know how it is that we contribute to that process with other people or lead that process with other people so these are just small ways on a small scale that we could start to think about integrating these ideas into our daily life but i'd also like to absolutely agree that getting together and talking about these things regularly is is really very very important thank you thank you yes mean and then we have Gary, and then we need to uh, conclude please Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity uh, and this uh, beautiful question. Uh, listening at all of you and seeing you as examples. Uh, I, I felt very inspired to share with you these words that um, looking at this question and I didn't want it to answer. <laughs> I wanted to hear and it, it becomes very evident that in a group of uh, scientists and educators and specialists, uh, you give this example, you are not looking for giving answers, you are looking about the integrality that all is interconnected. So from this, you share your observations, your inspirations, and it is never a finished answer, but the opportunity to continue to inspire and share. And from law laws, it means observe. So we need to observe and integral is interconnection. It means all is uh, synergetically uh, working together. Yes. So what comes really here is a, a sense of um, exemplar that from the example that can come some uh, echoes and uh, inspiration. I thank you so much for, for this opportunity and to I hope you can continue to inspire in such ways. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Yasmin. Uh, uh, Professor Notkin, is, are you still wanting to share? You, you don't raise your hand anymore? Is it? Uh, I heard that uh, time is uh, running out, but I wanted to say there's a, a phrase from one of the wise men. Uh, love is that uh, pet that uh, is being uh, raised, it uh, grows uh, by um, um, what's this word? Um, concessions. And uh, when we all have uh, problems, a lot of problems, especially between women and women in families, among friends, uh, also happens. Uh, when people are close, when they interact, even they sympathize each other, all the all of them have problems and uh, uh, by this kind of compromise uh, concessions uh, when we work with this kind of method methodology uh, we have a very powerful tool and it's mutual it's a huge power which uh, lifts us uh, above all the disagreements to a level of love and uh, not only in in a family but in all conflict uh, situations and it really helps it really works thank you thank you very much thank you very much yes so here we are our treasure chest is filled with beautiful first beautiful questions now it's filled with beautiful answers and it's all coming on this round table and we heard as answers we want to be uh, we want to have empathy we want to take every day as totally new even with your spouse we want to be in circles like the circle of women we want to get to know each other we want to find what is the other side saying when there are two sides two opponents and we want to inspire each other so that's part of the beautiful answers we got after the beautiful questions we have so thank you so much for your collective wisdom here that you brought in and inspired each other so we are concluding here we reached the end of the first day of this conference i would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to everyone who has contributed to the success of this event 
Our organizing committee has shown unwavering dedication over the past several months to bring together an exceptional group of speakers and participants and their hard work has been invaluable. So to all our attendees, I want to extend my sincere gratitude for your engagement also and enthusiasm throughout the conference. Your questions, comments and insights have made this a truly collaborative and rewarding experience for all who are involved. I would like also to take this opportunity to invite you to re-watch the conference, which will be available on uh, a YouTube, YouTube channel. And that we hope that you will find it as informative, as engaging as we did. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Central European time. This would be 2.30 Israel time here again on Zoom. And you will find our full program on our website. Without further ado, it is my great pleasure to pass to our esteemed director, Professor Ephraim Eliav, who will share his final thoughts on this remarkable event. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Joachim. You have really done a great uh, work of uh, the best uh, um, moderator ever possible. So I really would like to thank you very much for uh, being with us this uh, wonderful s session. I'd like also to thank all the presenters of uh, uh, today's session for being very informative, focused, and in integral. I believe that um, the presentations will be really very helpful for those who are practicing the integral approach in education, science, and even in everyday life. And I would like also to mention that uh, we have a wonderful team, uh, which is headed by uh, Jasmine. Uh, he's uh, the head of the organizational uh, committee. I'd like also to mention wonderful work of our social media media department, which is headed by Katie. Uh, Marek has done a very great work being the head of the uh, uh, technical uh, service. Our broadcast team, which uh, consists from Ruslan, Pavel, and uh, Victoria, we are very grateful for you. Translation team, which is just uh, unbelievably efficient. Uh, we have uh, uh, Sergey, Tommy, Alisa, Domas, and uh, Erganat there. And uh, I just also want to thank all the wonderful team of uh, Ehud Institute for being connected, for, for being in, in, uh, integral indeed. And I, it, um, I would like to uh, just uh, uh, inform you that we, we will have uh, again opportunity to meet uh, tomorrow and uh, we will have um, uh, again uh, a wonderful day of uh, uh, five talks and a roundtable discussion. So please come and I will welcome you again. Thank you very much, and see you tomorrow. Bye.